Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Rydek. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. problem I, uh, I I'm not great with flying but these little shuttles are the worst you don't like flying and yet you joined Starfleet there's a reason I'm not a pilot you should try it sometime Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little anxious. I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Chara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Starbase on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. Uh, Commander? I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintar's 5. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. So, there's that. Really? That's quite impressive. Thank you. It was tough. But, you know, I set my mind to it, and it paid off. Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds. Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. 
<laughs> now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground. When people say top three, what they really mean is third place. I'm not first, so there's always room for improvement. I'll, uh, keep working then. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermod is a Bolian, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Are you all right? Yeah, I I'm just... Well, I'm not sure where my departure dock is. The Resolute's gonna leave without me. Look here. The Resolute is leaving from this dock. Ah, oh, you're right. Nerves must be getting to me. Thanks so much, Commander. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Excuse me. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydek. I'm Commander Jan Ermat, operations officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It was a bit bumpy, but otherwise okay. Oh, my apologies. This storm is unlike anything I've seen before. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice from everything i've read and everything i've heard we're lucky you were available to us coming from a premier starship and all to our little research vessel i'll do my best to live up to expectations well, i'm sure you'll do just fine and if i can help in any way just let me know USS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but... It was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. With hundreds of crew members aboard the ship, it could have been so much worse. True. But you never think about it that way. You can't help but replay events in your head and think about the things you could have done instead. Listen. I realize you've known Captain Solana for quite some time. And I'm glad you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the Captain announced you would be the new First Officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. 
until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Trust is earned, and it sounds like I have my work cut out for me. But I plan on winning them over. I don't doubt that. I just figured it was better to know what you're walking into. Of course. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. Just the thing. that. I thought that thing was totally fried. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Nilly. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. Everything okay? I dropped a non-ferrous connector between the coils. Gonna have to remove a few of them to find it, and then... Ooh, then another hour of recalibrating. Ouch. I'll leave you to it. Hey, Diaz, can you give us some help with the transporter? What's the problem? We need to test this cargo transporter. I've never been that great with the signal plotting. I got it. No problem. Sweat. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, buddy, get, get off the track. Don't tell Chovak. Not a word. Time's a wasting. Sense in zero G. You're welcome.
Junction 34B gives you access to the tubes behind cargo storage all the way to the turbo lift. Not after the retrofit. The bulkhead cuts it off at section two. New computer reroutes. Hey, so then, need any help? Thinking we'll have to do the work in that. Okay. Then take Good luck. The lift from section two to section three. Wait, there's a subfloor crossover. Engineer. I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. You and me working together? We can tackle anything he throws at us. Your optimism is positively contagious. Looks like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. Petty officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Ed Salar on repeated occasions. Commander Chovak, isn't it true that if we were almost late, it categorically means that we were not late? That is correct, Mr. Diaz. I mean, if anything, Ed Salar and I are following the schedule to the letter. Yes, perhaps I should adjust the schedule accordingly. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. How concerned should we be about the storm? Uh, are you worried? Vulcans do not worry. We calculate the variables and take appropriate precautions to mitigate the risk. Right now, that entails making critical preparations, because long-range sensors show that these disturbances will be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander that. Chovak. All hands on deck. Oh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chovok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. It all comes down to us, Nilly. We're the ones who will get it ready. I know what we can do. But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. Huh. Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's gotta be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. Man, we've been through a whole hell of a lot as a crew. They're gonna have to prove themselves before they're really one of us. Yeah, you're right. Anyone could look serious in a clean uniform. Show me what you can do when everything's falling apart. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'm gonna take the high road here, pretend you didn't say that, and welcome you aboard. He's a better diplomat than I am. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can wrestle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. <sighs> Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa! 
Good to go. See you on the other side. Activating magnetic souls. Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Doridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Doridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator. He's still got a thing for trains. The warp engines of their day, apparently. I can't believe he keeps this around. Don't even know where mine is. Can't wait to plot a course myself. Just a sip of something. Rack the Gino. That sure has a kick. Jara Rydeck. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. My only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. That would be totally unnecessary. I don't need any pomp and circumstance. You've been here all of five minutes, and already you're trying to make us more efficient. I like it. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. I heard that you had an equipment malfunction. Is that what they're calling it? No, that's... that's just someone being generous. If anything, it was a leadership malfunction. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 pterodynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. 
what would have been the crowning achievement of my career. Right there, within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. <sighs> it was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make. And I have to live with the consequences. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees. As much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True. But as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say... I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. And I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission. I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. Starfleet hasn't said. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying. You have my full support. Thank you. But I feel like I still have so much to learn. You'll have plenty of opportunity. And if you're willing to put in the work, I'll do everything in my power to help you along the way. Come, let me introduce you to the crew. your attention for a moment. I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydek, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydek, 
It is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian, who's been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time. And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. If anything, the honor is mine. Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done. You really do know a thing or two about me. I'm glad I could... inspire you. But it's important to chart your own path. Thanks. You can count on it. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermont. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. I have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field, now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. Yeah, of course I do. Starfleet's an open door. We just have to walk through it wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Beginning recalibration. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. 
Well, I'm so glad you said that. Now I know exactly who to turn to when I have questions. Questions are more Commander Ermont's territory. Captain Solano primarily relies on my knowledge and expertise when he needs answers. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for First Officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. In my entire career, it's never been an issue, or caused the slightest problem. And I don't expect this to be any different. I was just curious, that's all. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. Hey, we just met. You might like me after you get to know me. They say familiarity breeds contempt, but who knows? Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this Ion Storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. Energy wave inbound on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormality. Red alert. Bye. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Bedrosian, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Heading locked. Raise shields. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. Radiation supercharged the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. It can blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one failsafe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. 
It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dears to Resolute, the failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. the regulator point. Opening the access panel. And now halting the EPS flow to the port nacelle. We have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Chobot can... coming down. All vibrations, too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. We have to release the ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. 
That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. The docking clamp isn't functioning. We're exploring the our option options. option is to detonate the emergency release. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! Ah! Grab my hand! I got you. Thank you. Plasma imbalance is reaching critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. Unconscious. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. I'm at the auxiliary hatch.
We made it. They're safe. Bringing the Sif fully online. Do it. Let's get this off. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. You gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Great. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. You disobeyed my orders. Well? Respectfully, Captain. I made the right choice, given the information I had- You disobeyed my orders! And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well! That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest, so here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order, but you were wrong. You weren't on board, and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And... If I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to... You did what you had to. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command, as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that.
Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Hi, Captain. You know what? You take this one. Me? Engage. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I... Uh, you don't look so good. I have to get to sickbay. Go. Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're... Rare. I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet, and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that, or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. I hear you. But that's my job, isn't it? 
to make sure that doesn't happen. And we don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Which is exactly why I'm so glad you're here. We need you now more than ever. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of duridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Lieutenant Bedrosian. I came to see if you were okay. We were all pretty worried on the bridge. No one knew what was happening. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. You don't have to explain to me. I understand. I'm just glad you're okay. You trusted me earlier with the shields, and I appreciated that. I want you to know that I have your back. Thank you. Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's a combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Be brief. Good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. So, be honest. How bad do I look? You look... rugged. Rugged? Okay, how about heroic? Millie was looking in on you too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I... I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Wait. Are you angry at me or something? Oh, no, no. Not that. I'm sorry. I'm probably making too big of a deal here. What I'm trying to say is, we've been really good friends for a long time. But I got back here and I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to see if there's more between us. Than just being friends. Are you sure about this? They're my feelings. Of course I'm sure. Well, I, I just mean seeing me in here after we almost got killed out on the hall. I felt this way before that, Carter. I like you. And I think there could be something more for us. So, what do you say? I like you too, Miranda. I'd like to see where this goes. Good. That's... I was really hoping you'd say that. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest. If he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. 
Losing. I can't get it any clearer. It won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Uh, you sure? I'm sure. Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. gonna take out the shuttle. There's the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Rydek, plot an intercept course. On it. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Got it. Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. Shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock. Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Wow. Let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer... Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon. Well, it wasn't all me. I got some help from upstairs. A bombastic approach to clearing debris. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. 
The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. I'd rather investigate than speculate. A sound principle. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. We're all curious about the future, Ambassador. Specifically, what exactly are we getting involved in here? We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. <laughs> Olydia and Hotari. The Olydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Olydians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. How is it the Hotari were able to turn the tables and take the mines against superior forces, especially after decades in this arrangement? Unclear. The answer to that question may be the key to a new, lasting peace, and one that I hope we can uncover during these negotiations. But it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Elydian fleet if this escalates to open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective after all. We can call it profitable or mutually beneficial, but at the end of the day, the Hotari are still being exploited for their own resources. True peace is not merely the absence of war. And as such, this conflict will surely come again. Neither the Elydians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Olydians as a source of dilithium. 
That certainly changes things. Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. That means the Hotari have no reason to trust us. I wouldn't go that far, Commander. We are completely neutral in this matter, on neither one side nor the other. Any suggestion otherwise would compromise our position. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Illidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. If it's keeping the two sides talking instead of shooting at each other, that actually helps us negotiate a peace. And we'll take advantage of that as long as it works in our favor. And when it doesn't? All the more reason to learn as much about it as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught unprepared, should the energy anomaly continue to fluctuate. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. I'm perfectly happy to work outside the lines. And by extension, you will be doing your duty, Commander. Just not too far outside the lines. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. The Ambassador asked me to take a look, and I'm ready to crack this thing open. Good. You could learn from Mr. Diaz's focus. I'll take notes. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. Even Chobok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of Saurian brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do.
Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. So... I know about your talk with Miranda. You... you do? She sent me a Priority One dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. You really don't believe in me, huh? It's not you. Or her. Just running the numbers and things don't work out more often than they do. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done? Yeah, it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There, that's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance, or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the navigation array. Navigation array checks out, so it must be a coil. Except it's not. Checked and double-checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team.
Hey. I'm not here. We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Well, we can't let the brass catch us slacking on the job. Just play along. This is a Mark IV outboard diagnostic panel used for troubleshooting shuttles and other medium-sized transport vehicles. Some people prefer the Mark V because it's one better, but the Mark IV is still one better than the Mark III. <laughs> oh, that all sounds very technical. Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari. That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Get you all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. You got a deal. Be seeing you. Salar de Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? So the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. <laughs> Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Same. Warp field inversion and the cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure returned non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. That doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static field intensity, warp 1.1, 1.2. Three. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. 
Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you have come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Olydians. It's very nice to meet you. Likewise, I hope... These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. The reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But, either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron. The heroes of the revolt in the mines. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. Something about his tone? Tells me this won't be easy. That was my sense as well. I doubt he speaks for all of Hotari. So I would urge patience until we speak with their queen. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Hotari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. Saying this wouldn't be easy was an understatement. 
I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? She's not She can speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kovliad, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Kovliad is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliad suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No. It was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our mines. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. As Ambassador Spock has said, We've come seeking a peaceful resolution to this conflict, and have no interest in your dilithium. I'm not nearly as naive as you must think. The Federation has done business with the Illidians for decades, which makes me question your motives. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone. Especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before Dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on Tau? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? Can only be one or the other, not both. If there can only be one, then it would be in the best interest of all involved if the Illidians resumed operation of the mines. And that is why we should not trust our fate to the Federation. She speaks sense. You do well to listen to her. And you do well to hold your tongue. We 
will take back our minds by any means necessary. Then you will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I would agree, Ambassador Spock. I think this is best left to those of us with more experience in diplomatic matters. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Hmm. Soothing. Commander, after hearing so much about the Federation's sense of fairness and justice, I was surprised that you sided with the Elidians. In all honesty, I expected more, especially from someone like you. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. On the Elidians' terms, apparently. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. Did you have help from someone else? Hotari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, they are Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. I have to say, I fully expected you to side with the Hotari, but obviously the Federation wants a steady supply of dilithium, something only we can offer. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. Left to the Hotari, it would be nothing short of a disaster. We're not on either side. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major solid Arminta, Special Attaché, Lydian Armed Forces, Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. 
They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. You just answered your own question. How do a group of miners do something that in theory can't be done? That's how. Harnessing the storm. But, even if it's true, how does that even happen? You tell me. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Commander, if I could have a quick word with you. Of course. Commander Rydek. I have to admit, I was surprised when you said the Illidians should control the dilithium trade. I was under the assumption the Federation was neutral. But, maybe I was wrong. We came to help negotiate a peace, not for business. And I can assure you, we have no interest in dilithium. Everyone has an interest in dilithium. But I trust a peaceful resolution serves all our interests. I saw you speaking with the Illidian. I'm sure they're painting themselves as the victims. The Illidians are under the impression the Hotari are somehow the cause of the Ion Storm. <laughs> Which I'm sure they attribute to our lack of experience or sheer inferiority. But we are as much the victims of this horrific storm as they are. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. For better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. They're miners, not diplomats. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe... The Lydians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. Are you sure of this? It's been the talk of the palace since the day of the revolt. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. 
take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chobach. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. I'm setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Commander Westbrook, the Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. Standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Nah, Lieutenant Commander Chovak's not so bad. You know, once you get used to him. And, uh, I've learned a lot working under him. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work harder. Be a political animal like you. With this new first officer coming aboard. This is far enough. Transporting the first probe into position.
Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. <sighs> Problem? I just can't get a handle on her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. But, on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But, she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of, well, one of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. With two points of data, the Resolute and the Probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Chovan, sure. I appreciate the advice, Commander. I'll make sure I keep my options open. I don't need to tell you how to operate. You're already well on your way. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. I love it. So put me up for promotion. I'm ready for my next challenge. Well, I think you're going to have to prove that to your boss, Chovak, first. He's the one who has to put you up for consideration. Well, then I'll just have to change Commander Chovak's mind. I'll work hard and better. And he won't be able to ignore it. You've got grit. I'll give you that. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak, we're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Mark. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. We got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. 
We're under attack, and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. It's the current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations... They line up with the interference pattern. The storm, and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here... ...it's just a small part of something much bigger. have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear. This is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the Moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. To peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. For all their posturing, every indication is that the Elidians are afraid of the Hotari. They didn't bring their warship as a threat, they brought it because they're scared. From everything we witnessed, I would say that is highly likely. But what are they afraid of? Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they changed their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Given their indifference to the negotiations, and what we now know about this warp-disrupting weapon, it's almost as if they want to start a war. And Sidron was convinced the only thing the Elidians respect is force. I would say he's right about that. But at least they know when to hold back. But that does not explain why they would turn their aggressions against us. I don't think the Elidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Arminta said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hatari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Elidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. We've received an urgent call from Hotari. The Queen's advisor, Tylus, has asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Sidron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. I found something. I'm sending you a scan. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but... I have to go. Tylus. Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. 
We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. We have to help her. Send another shuttle. We're not maybe... doing anything yet. Not until we know more. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tyler suspects this came from the mines on Tau. Hmm. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the Resolute. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Illidians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith, which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption. And targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. we Will do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? Took some damage on the way. <sighs> that ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to. Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ7 interlock? From the toolbox. I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. Here, I'll help. <laughs> We've got this. Say ah. Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Oh, I thought security was the detail to be on. Now all of a sudden you're interested in engineering? Just the engineer. Come on, start pulling chips.
What's this? Some kind of crystal formation? Whoa. This substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen, carbon, and lithium. It's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there? Wait. Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Regulation 364, subsection 9, orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. This is another piece of the puzzle we're trying to put together. We should be investigating it. And you can. In the containment lab. But protocol is protocol. I can't make an exception just for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. But I overheard talk about the warp disruption on the shuttle. Now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could trigger a distress call, get Starfleet to send more ships. Or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. We're at the edge of the quadrant. Help isn't just gonna pop over like we're in Sector 001. Wouldn't hurt to try. You talk like you've never had your backs up against a wall before. This is Starfleet. We solve our own problems. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. The last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Mm. Almost forgot. You can't have that. For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us? Or it's because this is all happening so fast? Yeah. There was something a little off about her. Like that talk about sending a distress call? That was pretty out there. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now, we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda, too. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydick, if you want to take it from here. Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. 
Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze. Ninety nine point two per cent match. Got it. So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over six hundred thousand years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. Actually, I've heard of the Takan. You have? Quite impressive, Commander. Computer, summarize the Enterprise D's discovery of a Takan outpost. On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D, under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating the release with an entity known as Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field? It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field, after Commander William T. Riker of the Away Team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M-class planet, a barren rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. There appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. 
I suppose it makes sense, considering what happened to the Enterprise-D. The Illidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, I see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. For now, it's probably best we don't let on how much we know. Mm. Play our cards close to the vest. Smart. I agree. Then when the time is right, we can confront them. Diplomatically, of course. Uh, right. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. <sighs> we need to know what's down there. What the Hotari are hiding. To better understand what we're up against. And to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. Which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'll get the away team in and out. They're in safe hands with me. Under normal circumstances, that would be the case. But given the sensitive nature of this incursion, I'm afraid you'll have to go it alone. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality and aggravating an already tense situation. We can't afford any mistakes, which is why I've chosen you. Tylus will be essential to my success. Not only her knowledge of the mines, but her ability to gain access, particularly now that we know which mine we need to get into. Make sure she understands the need to keep this covert. She's not going to want her people to know about this. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Olydians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so. We'll provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Petty Officers Diaz and Ed Salar, where is the crystal formation that you found in the shuttle? I have tasked Ensign Calloway with performing a full analysis of the tetrametric pulses. Security brought it to the containment lab. I was just there. They don't know anything about it. Security never checked it in. Miranda never got there? She's the one that had the crystal formation? Diaz, Tamaris. Carter Diaz to Miranda Maris. Commander Westbrook to Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Respond. Something's not right. She's still on the ship. She has to be. Computer, locate Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Petty Officer Miranda Maris is in the isolinear storage array on deck five. I'll go find her. Good. I am sure Mr. Diaz can attend to this on his own.
Someone improperly pulled these isolinear chips. It's just you. I'm busy right now. Why don't you come back later? I called you on the comm badge. Twice. Commander Westbrook, too. Why didn't you answer? Oh. I guess I was just caught up in my work. But I'm through here. So I can't stay in chat. I have other things to do. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. But hold on a second. Commander Westbrook said the crystal formation we found in the shuttle never made it to the containment lab. He sent me to find you. I don't know why he'd say that. I brought the crystals to the lab myself. Whatever he told you, he got it wrong. All I know is where I left them. Westbrook wouldn't lie about that. Are you really so sure? I just said he wouldn't. Then maybe he's mistaken. I don't know. Look, I appreciate that you came to check on me, but I'm fine. You worry too much. We're on a starship. Nothing's gonna happen to me here. I'm worried because you're acting strange. One minute you're citing regulation to take the crystals, and now you don't seem to care that they've gone missing. And what are you even doing in here? Will you drop it? I don't like being interrogated, Carter. Hey! Wait up! <clears throat> I'm getting some very mixed signals from you right now. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of stress right now. Just tell Chovak or whoever I don't know where the crystals are, and let me go about my business. I know we have some... things to figure out. If you won't give me a straight answer, you can tell them yourself. This doesn't concern you. So I'm good with that. Miranda, hold on! No. Get out of my way. <laughs> found each other. You were taking so long, the commander sent us to see what the problem was. Diaz, you were sent here with specific orders, and fighting your crewmate wasn't one of them. What the hell is going on here? Let's just let them explain. I'd like to hear that, because I know what it looks like. Ask her! She was doing something with this. Copying all kinds of data. This drive is unauthorized. There are ISOs all over the floor. And that's why I was in here, investigating this situation. And when Carter came looking for me, we got our wires crossed. It wasn't anything more than that. Check the data on this drive. I'm sure it'll show her access codes were used. And there were probably files copied while I was still with you two in engineering. 
That makes sense. Then get someone down here who can prove that. But until then, I have to go. I don't know what's going on here, but I think we need to call it into security. She can explain herself in the brig. Hold on a minute. We don't need to put this on anyone's permanent record. Miranda, maybe you're feeling out of sorts and we should head to sickbay so the doc can check you out? Yeah, I... I haven't felt right since I came back from Hotari. I think I should see the doctor. You two know her? If you really think she's not well, we can take her to sickbay first. But what I know is this is a security breach, and we should treat it as such. Please, just let me go see the doctor. This is Petty Officer Diaz. I need a security team to Deck 5. This is unbelievable. Rydek here. This is Zermont. Any trouble getting to the surface? I'm really starting to miss transporters. As long as this storm is around, you'd better learn to light shuttles. But if you can find the cause of the interference, we might be able to get back to transporting. As if I needed another incentive. We both know there's a lot more than that riding on this. Fair enough. You'll need to get in and out of the mine undetected, so I hope Minister Tylus can help in that regard. So do I. And to keep this covert, we'll refrain from contact unless absolutely necessary. Understood. Rydek out. The ionic interferences coming from underground. I should find a safer way down there. Saw your shuttle take off. Hopefully no one else did. It's good to see you. Even under these unfortunate circumstances. Thank you for agreeing to this. You've already taken risks on our behalf. It means a great deal that you would do so again. If it's for my people, no risk is too great. Lead the way. I'll fill you in on what we've learned about the situation. Follow me. The device Galvin and Sidron brought back from the mines is being used to control some sort of warp disruption weapon that has the Resolute trapped in Hotari space. According to our readings, the power source for that device is on this moon, at the specific coordinates I sent you. That sounds impossible, but explains the rumors of the Hotari controlling the Ionic Storm. We strongly suspect the device was created by an ancient empire known as the Takan. The Takan? Once the most powerful civilization in the galaxy. But they've been gone for over 600,000 years. It's hard to believe there's something like that on Tau. Which is why I need proof. 
If we find hard evidence that Galvin and his allies are hiding dangerous Takan technology, I can convince the Federation to let us intervene. Understood. We're almost there. That's the mine? Prospect 614 North, Subdivision 20. It's enormous. Just one of the thousands across town. The pride of Hotari. How do we get inside? The structure that circles the mine has entry points for transporting equipment into the lower levels. They're guarded, but nothing I can't get past using my authority. Well, that's good to hear. As long as you can avoid being seen, I should be able to talk my way past any miner. And provide a little distraction for you in the process. How do I avoid being seen? You don't use the door. How dare you! Don't you know who I am? I... I am Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs! That's not... The Queen would be furious to hear you try to deny me entry. The Queen? But I just... You just... Just what? Just now realize the trouble you've made for yourself? And who exactly do you think you're going to report this to? Because I'll be reporting it as well, to someone much further up the ladder. You have no authority here. Do you understand who pays your wage? I can inform the Queen directly of this insolence. There's no You'll need. regret everything you've said here today. You should have opened the doors the second I appeared before you. That, that's not the protocol. I didn't Each know you were... second you delay my entry will be recorded, processed, and permanently marked on your record. I can't believe this. Does your brain function? Do you Someone takes their breaks up here. Maybe the same guard who left that window unlocked. You're digging your own grave. I suppose the view is nice. I've reached the end of my patience. Escort me to the maintenance bay. I... I told you, I can't just... Now! A wise choice. Lead the way, and be quick. <sighs> Not going that way. Force field. Looks like it was installed recently. No safe way around it. Let's get a look inside you. system access. Let's see if I can just... Bingo. Better hurry. Not sure how long she can keep him busy. be rigged to only open for registered users. No control panel here. I should take a look with my tricorder. Something in here is keeping that door closed.
Got it. Should remove the security check on the door. I didn't come here to educate an imbecile on royal protocol. Of course not, Minister. So I will be about my business here, and you will take yourself out of my sight. There you are. You really let that guy have it. It worked, didn't it? I'm used to having to throw my weight around. Hard to get anyone to listen to you otherwise. Gotta admit, I'm a little afraid of you now. You're lucky we're on the same side. I'd say so. The catwalks were booby-trapped. Galvin and Sidron have gone to great lengths to keep out the uninvited. Well, we're inside. Where do you want to start? The ionic interference is coming from below us. We need to go deeper. That lift goes down, at least to the changeover station. But we can't use it without DNA authorization from one of the guards. I have an idea, but we need a few samples of DNA from the miners who work here. Samples? Fingerprints, sweat, blood. Which will trick the machine and get us control of the lift. That's the theory. Let's test it. Do you think we could just find a way to climb over this? Possibly. But the console on the lift itself is locked by the same system that locks this ramp. No shortcuts, then. I'm sure you can figure something out. What's in all these containers? These contain mining supplies. Tools, energy packs for machinery. Shouldn't mining supplies be inside the mines? It is troubling. If the workers here aren't mining... An Elydian console. All the managerial technology in the mines is Elydian. So they can keep an eye on their investment. That's how it is. There's DNA on this console, but it's only partial. I can't use this. Maybe because we're outside. The weather out here could dilute any DNA samples. What about inside that structure? That's where the workers spend most of their time. Good idea. Wow, that is a lot of DNA. I should look for the most concentrated spots. Not concentrated enough. I should try somewhere else. This'll work. That's a stable DNA sample. It's only partial, but a few more should do it.
Hygiene clearly isn't a priority down here. Use this. Good. That's another I could use. Just need one more sample. Almost looks like coffee. Almost. I'll have some Ractagino when I get back to the ship. Hmm. Leftovers. I should give this a scan. There's gotta be stable DNA here. Perfect. That's enough to make the DNA profile. Time to go back to the lift. Hotari must be tough on the inside, too. You're not coming inside? There are some things I'd rather not smell. Ah. This facility doesn't seem well maintained. It worked. Theory proven. I'll get it started. Ready? I'm a little afraid of what we might find down there. We'll be okay. I've survived worse than this. Well, I haven't. But I'll put my faith in you. For now. Who are you? What are you doing here? You watch your tone with me. I'm Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. I speak for the Queen herself. This is a restricted area. No one gains access without the approval of Galvin or Sidron. Wait. Jewess Gawad Aboencha. <laughs> Are you injured? No, I, I just... I thought if I could talk my way through like always, I'd be fine, but... I, I, I'm a diplomat. This isn't what I do. I've never even fired a weapon. This is just... It's real now. I wasn't ready for this. Hey, I'll keep you safe. Can you? I was a tactical officer before I was posted to the Resolute. I know my way around a phaser. You saw how I handled our large friend here. I suppose that is somewhat reassuring. My authority has never been challenged like that. 
It meant nothing to him. So we should assume any Hatari we encounter from here on can't be reasoned with. Agreed. The only loyalty they have down here is to Galvin and Citron. Can you switch over the lift? The guard should have a scan card that will allow us to operate the switch. Got it. He's not... dead, is he? He's still one of my people, and I didn't come here to take Otari lies. My phaser's set to stun. He'll be perfectly fine, just unconscious for a while. I see. We don't have that sort of technology on our weapons. Good to know. The energy readings are emanating from this tunnel. It's sure to be guarded in there. Stay low and follow my lead. Is that all dilithium? Not all of it. We excavate large chunks of rock that contain varying amounts of dilithium ore. It's sorted and processed at the collector ship above. Guards. I take that as a sign we're getting close. I'll get a closer look. Looks like they've improvised a barrier. Yes, we must be getting closer. We need that particular card, don't we? I'm afraid so. We don't have time to wait for them to finish whatever they're doing. We'll have to try to keep low and sneak past them. I'm starting to see the utility of a phaser. I wouldn't stand a chance against all three of them. Can you open that door? Not without that scan card. I don't like our options here. I have to get us that card so we can open the door. How? If they detect you, Galvin and Sidron's followers are clearly willing to kill to protect whatever is in this mine. Hey, I'm trained for this. I'll be fine. What should I do? Avoid being seen. Stick to the edge of the room and meet me at the door. Such a hassle. Analysis in progress. The Lydians won't try something else. They saw our power, our resolve. They're terrified of us. Until the plan is complete, we're vulnerable. Then get back to work, and we'll complete the plan.
Anyone who prevents our destiny shall be eliminated. Stay close. Stop! What? Motion sensors. They'll trigger an alarm. We'll be found. Invisible to the naked eye. They could be anywhere. How will we get through? It's where the uprising started. Hotari, don't do this. We defend ourselves, but we don't kill on this scale, this level of savagery. There's no such thing as a bloodless rebellion. I don't know if we should keep going. So much death. I don't want to end up like them. We'll make sure they didn't die for nothing. What we learned here could save the rest of your people. Okay. Okay. Whatever happened here, it made the Illidians abandon the mines. Let's find out what they're so scared of. Is this the effects of an Illidian Disruptor? Yes. Disruptors are cruel weapons.
These crystalline particles, they're not dilithium. Are they common in the mines? Not that I've ever seen. From the blast marks, it looks like the Elidians had far greater firepower. Otari. And Elidian. Both sides took a beating. The Hotari fortified the side of the room opposite the door. It's a good tactic, but a few crates aren't going to stop fully armed Elidian soldiers. How did they win? Footprints. Elidian boots. Running back the way we came. Tylus. What? What kind of weapon did this? This is like nothing I've ever seen or heard of. M my people don't have a weapon that does this. What else can you tell me? Awful way to die. This must be why the Elidians are so afraid. Technology that surpasses their own, in the hands of the Hotari that they've lorded over for centuries. Where did this weapon come from? Well, the crystals are giving off tetrametric pulses. If I set my tricorder to search for that frequency, it'll lead us right to the source. Solidian tried to run. They didn't let him. The Elidians shot to kill. But if they killed him, why was he shot in the back? Huh, you're right. The shot came from the side the Hatari were defending. We don't kill our own. And he wasn't just caught in the middle. Killed by the same crystallization as the Elidian. Whose side was the killer on? Tylus, you may not want to look down there. I've come too far to... What is this? They've been dumping bodies down here. Uh... Unforgivable. Galvin and Citron will be made to answer for this. Think they parked this here on purpose? One way to find out. Need any help? I've got it.
This concentration of tetrametric radiation has never been recorded. Whatever they're hiding, it's right through here. This feels strange. The crystals are increasing, growing outward, replacing the soil. It's like an infection, a parasite, growing inside Tau. Incredible. This is definitely not Hotari. It's the remnants of the Takan Empire. I don't think we should be here. This is exactly where we should be. Every strange thing we've seen in this system, it might all come from this room. We need to learn everything we can. somewhat resembles a transporter pad. What are we looking at? It's made of the same crystalline material as the rest of this place. But I can't tell much else. Might be some kind of sleep mode. I can't analyze this further unless it starts working normally. Maybe we can turn it on from somewhere else. Hopefully. Let's keep looking around. Look familiar? It's almost identical to the console Galvin has hidden in the palace. It looks like a control surface. Can your device read this? It can roughly translate the words, but we don't have enough Taconian language on record to understand how it's structured. Oh well. What is it? The device's primary function is to transmute lithium into this quantized crystalline compound. Possibly for the creation of weapons. Do you think one of these was used on the Validian in the tunnels? Such a cruel weapon. Looks like some sort of replicator. I can't get it to work. It has power. Must be looking for some other kind of authorization.
Crystallized lithium compounds. Its internal structure is extremely ordered. In fact, the states of these crystals on a subatomic level suggests a storage device of some kind. Energy levels are both stable and ordered, like information. Some of them appear to be depleted. What kind of information would you deplete? Why are these all over the floor? This suggests there's some type of complex life form contained within each crystal. Life form? There's something alive in these tiny crystals? That's what it says, but hard to imagine how that's possible. Our science division will have a field day with this. We need to study it on the ship. Jara? I see it. What's happening? Someone turned it on. There's no one here. Then maybe the device I saw in the palace can send a signal? If that's the case, we may not be alone for long. Let's hurry. This... can't be right. It's putting out almost 50 zettajoules of energy. I assume that's a lot? Enough to power this entire quadrant. This amount of power, the, the kind of radiation it's putting out, it's... It's the cause of the storm. The warp disrupting beam, all of it. What do we do now? We get back to the Resolute. They have to know about this. Come on, let's... Quickly. We have to hide. Outrageous! I demand you let me go! No need to complain. You're about to receive a gift beyond your wildest imagination. If anything, I consider it an honor.
What is that? What are you doing? You'll see. Soon enough. I, I can influence the course of the negotiations. I can make sure the Hotari get the better end of the bargain. So can I. said anything? Miranda won't be in here for long. Just gotta sort this all out. If there was a chance between you two, I think you've blown it out the airlock. Hope you're happy. Miranda doesn't deserve this. We're supposed to be her friends. What did you want me to do? I wanted to bring her to sick bay. You weren't there until the very end. We were at the start of something good. And you throw it away like that. I never thought you'd turn on me like this. I didn't turn on you. You brought this on yourself. Unless... you have some kind of explanation? You think I owe you an explanation? Starfleet and its never-ending search for answers. We tried to find the other members of the security team that went to Hotari, but they're missing. We found their comm badges stashed in a Jeffrey's tube. You better hurry up and find them. There's not much time left. You're working with them. You have a keen mind, Carter. That's something I liked about you. But that won't be enough. Here's something. What is it? Maris didn't get bioscanned after returning from Hotari. Neither did the other two that are missing. None of them were scanned. Which should not have happened. She came over and helped us open the engine compartment. The others, too. They must have used it as a way to skirt the scan. So they knew they had to get around it. I'll scan Petty Officer Maris and get some data to cut through all this speculation. I think it's better if I do it. Open up too. I can't believe this. <laughs> Ridiculous. Data coming in. Come here for a second. Did you know? Know what? That's not Petty Officer Miranda Maris. What are you talking about? It's right here on the tricorder. Hold on. Then who is it? From what I'm reading, she might look like Miranda. Walk and talk like her, too. But she has different brainwaves and even different DNA. Somehow, this isn't the same person we left Starbase with. I'm going to feed this into the main computer and run some more analysis. Commander, there's got to be something we can do for her. This is... incredible. By some process we don't yet understand, Miranda's body is being... rewritten. Her mind has been remapped to another personality, and her DNA is resequencing. I'm not sure the extent of it, but it appears to be... Something, someone has taken over and is bioforming her. That's a crude way to describe it. Bioforming. This is a problem. 
A big one. What are you? I'm Miranda. But so much more. Don't let them get the storage drive! Ah! It's not in the Universal Translator. Who the hell are you? We are the Scions of the Flame. Stop her! They're getting away! Shoot her! Scions of the Flame? I don't like the sound of that. never gonna believe this. The reason the Universal Translator didn't recognize that language is because it's only ever been read. It's the Takan language. Get your filthy Hotari hands off me! We'll burn your planet to the ground, animals! Wait. No! <laughs> Brother, rejoin the flame. This can only mean our time has come. I'm only sorry I couldn't find a more suitable host for you. All in good time. This is only the beginning. They're working together? An Alidian and a Hotari? They did something to him. Secure the Cartabula. Cartabula? It's the energy source. Spread out. Search the vault. Go back through the mine. Cut off their escape. Find them! Time to go. We're blocking the only exit. Maybe not. Can you buy me some time? For what? This vehicle looks a lot tougher than that vehicle.
we're trapped. They're blocking the only exit. Maybe not. Can you buy me some time? For what? This vehicle looks a lot tougher than that barrier. Blocking the only exit. Maybe not. Can you buy me some time? For what? This vehicle looks a lot tougher than that vehicle. I'll handle them. We're surrounded. I'll get it working. I just need some time.
the lift. We're trapped. Resolute, two to beam up immediately. Resolute, come in. Dora! <laughs> Are you all right? I think so. It hurts. still can't get a lock. Miranda was able to transport through the storm. There has to be some path through that we're not seeing. Tetrametric radiation is saturating our sensors. There is too much interference to pick up the residual transporter signature. Wait, 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 wait. Tetrametric radiation? Of course. I can align the transporter with the tetrametric signature. Crystals emit tetrametric pulses every 3.8422 seconds, roughly 26 centihertz. All of this is connected. The storm, the warp killing field, the crystals, Miranda's alien transporter tech. Okay, I've got the transporter in calibration. There are a lot of biosigns in that mine, all stacked on top of each other. I need something to identify the commander's signal. Something loud, energetic. Understood. Rydek, we have penetrated the storm's interference, but we are unable to pinpoint your signature. We need you to generate a high-energy event to help us... High-energy event. Got it. Tylus, are you still with me? I am. Good. I'm going to shoot my phaser at some dilithium to cause a piezoelectric rupture. What? Why? Signal flare. And if these crystals have to be pure enough. Dilithium explosion. Is that energetic enough? More than enough. I can lock onto their bioscience now. I've got their bioscience isolated. Commander, we have your signal. I'm gonna tunnel a path through the ionic interference. Got a path. Just gotta calibrate the signal. Energize. Petty Officer Diaz. We're losing her. The pattern is degrading. Can you hold the signal? I'm trying. Thank you. 
I got it. Come on, come on. Yes! Get her to sickbay. Captain Solano and Ambassador Spock have just returned from Hotari. Take a look at that. Radek, I need you on the bridge, now. I'm here. The Elidians are preparing to attack Hotari. Status report. The systems are now fully powered. All torpedo tubes open. They're preparing to fire! We should hail the Elidian flagship, Captain. Readying phasers if you want them. Stand by. Await my order. Recommendation, Commander? We need to act quickly. Hail the Elidians. Maybe we could talk some sense into them. Hail them. No response. Try it again. Still nothing. The Elidians? They've powered down their weapons. Odd. You sure about that, Mr. Amon? They're venting some kind of gas from their ship. Hold on. Now all of their systems have shut down. That's unexpected. Maintain our position. No telling what they're up to. Yes, sir. What's happening? There's an energy dampening field coming from Tau. Take us out of range. Aye, Captain. Captain, the flagship is hailing us. On screen. Zeldi to the starship Resolute. Our main power cores are completely disabled. The more power we give, the more it takes. Running off batteries. Life support systems have failed. Unable <coughs> to ventilate contaminated atmosphere. Admiral, you are about to launch an attack on a defenseless planet. Kobliot, you supported us in the negotiations. We need your help again now. Please, I beg of you. You must render assistance. System failures are compounding around my ship. We'll help you. Yes, we will. Thank you. Admiral, excuse us while we devise a rescue plan. By my estimate, the crew only have 23 minutes before their atmospheric mix becomes lethal. While we may not be able to transport the Elidians directly, if we were to transport them from their ship to a nearby shuttlecraft, it should be possible to amplify the transporter signal there and reroute it to the Resolute. The Ambassador's plan is incomplete. An away team will have to beam aboard the Zeldi and set up pattern enhancers for a stable enough signal out of the dampening field. Thank you for identifying my deficiency, Commander Chovak. Jara, I need a senior officer in command of this. Take Chovak and Bedrosian in the shuttle and get it done. Petty officers Diaz and Edsilar, you will be part of the rescue mission, as will I. We will bring the shuttle within transporter range of the Zeldi, then beam you both aboard. Beam us on board? Why? The pattern enhancers must be placed on the Zeldi to make it possible to beam the Elidians back to the Resolute. Gather the pattern enhancers and get to the docking bay. going on the wrong mission. Oh, uh, what's that? We're going to rescue the Elidians, the people that oppress the Hotari, when we should be going to rescue Miranda. This thing that's happened to Miranda is like the Trill symbiosis joining, only worse. And I've seen too many people I care about wiped away by some greater entity to stand by while the same thing happens to her. I wanted no part of it then, and I won't stand for it now. Your body's stolen and used like puppets. It won't be easy. She's gonna fight us every step of the way. We've seen that. Remember, it's not her that's fighting us. 
I know. But... Right now, we've got other lives to save. Yeah. The away team is ready. Resolute to Shuttlecraft Melville. You are cleared for takeoff. Acknowledged, Resolute. Melville taking off. We are within range. Any closer will put the shuttlecraft at risk. Preparing to transport the away team. Energizing. ship's life support. It, it's almost completely drained. And the other systems, too. Oh, no. We gotta get to their transporter room. The atmosphere in here is turning to poison. All of these Elidians are going to die if we don't get them out of here. These must close in case of emergency. They don't have enough power left to function. Carter, give them a charge with your phaser. Should make them open. It's not working. No power's running through any of this. We gotta get him open Stop. manually. I am the ranking officer here. State your intentions. We are under siege. Explain yourselves. Our intentions? Y your leaders asked for our help. And they said... You? Yeah. 
Whoa there. I am still able to stand. What are you trying to do? We gotta get into your transporter room. Then we can get your people off the ship. Make sure they're evenly spaced. We need to manually adjust beam trajectory so they connect. I got this one. You get the others. Pattern enhancers are aligned and ready to go. Let's round them up. These will boost the signal so we can transport through the storm. We have a shuttle outside this ship that will route the signal to the Resolute. All crew to transporter room two. We are evacuating. We're alive. Here they come. <laughs> okay, coordinates. Beam status. Energizing controls. Please, step on the platform so we can evacuate you, Admiral. The crew goes first, Harminter. Sir. I mean it. You! Get on the platform already! Okay. The interface is in Elydian, but the layout is the same as a Starfleet transporter. I just gotta do what I did before. Select the people to transport. Plot a path through the ionic interference. Path goes through too much interference, it won't work. Okay, just have to calibrate the signal gain to get the highest possible output. Even at this range, the interference is too much. The system is suggesting better transport coordinates. DS the shuttle. 
You're sitting right in the thick of it. I'm sending you specific coordinates for a clear signal path. Waypoint's been added to the navigational computer. There, Commander. Give or take 50 meters. Melville to away team. Energize. I have the first group of Elidians in the pattern buffer. Redirecting and transmitting to the Resolute now. This is Resolute. We have the Olydians safely aboard. <laughs> we did it! I was so worried this wouldn't work. Good work. Keep it up. Yes, Commander. This is Commander Rydek. We're holding steady. Signal is good. Keep them coming. To those in my charge, sir. I must insist you go so you can lead our people. I will see to any stragglers. Yes, that may be for the best. But first, let me thank our human saviors. I'll pin medals on your uniforms when this is over. For all your brave work. You're very welcome, Admiral. Does Starfleet let you wear another fleet's medal? We will find out. We're ready for transport. Get the Admiral to safety. Energize. Massive power surge! Sending available power to the annular confinement beam. I have the Elidians in the pattern buffer, but I cannot resolve their signal to send them through to the Resolute. Nor can I materialize them here. We need a better position with the Resolute. Almost there. 
I am losing their patterns. I need more power, but internal relays are not functioning. I'll do it manually. Do it. I am trying. I will lose the transport if I do not have more time. The signal is resolving. Uh, please! Finish the transport! I have them. Transport complete. She is injured. Lieutenant Pedrosian has been injured, but the last transport was successful. Oh, thanks, B. Unfortunately, our shuttle systems were damaged by the power surge. We can no longer serve as the transporter node. Carter, these readings are off the charts. The source of the storm is on this ship. That must have been the power surge when it came on board. You're right. The Takan energy source. They call it the Cartabula. It's here. Is that? The intruders are preparing to bring the Zeldi to war. And we're about to be stuck on it. There is an old Elidian saying about leaping off the hot skillet and falling to the flame below. Yeah, we got that one too. This, this is an opportunity for us. We're on this ship. We can stay in the shadows. See where they're taking the Cartabula. And do something to stop them. You always wanted the chance to do something big. That's all well and good, but if we're not getting off this ship, we're really backed into a corner here. We can't get off this ship. But maybe I could target somewhere on, on the ship. ship. We are reading the warp engines powering up. Yeah, we picked up on that. We do not have a way to evacuate you from the Zeldi. The shuttlecraft is too heavily damaged. That's all right, Commander. We have a plan of our own. We're gonna stay on this ship. That is very... bold of you, Mr. Diaz. Live long... and prosper. I hear voices down the corridor. It will be here soon. I'll guard the door. You just get us out of here, Diaz. Hey, Stretch. Help us with this map. Find somewhere as remote as you can. They're almost here. There. The aft cargo bay. That is acceptable. Sounds good to me. Whatever you're doing, do it now! We're locked in. Board a transport. Come on, Bell. <laughs> Bell. It's too late for him. Carter. Three to transport. to have left any warp signature at all. I cannot track its trajectory. 
Our duty often calls for sacrifice. She knows it, and our people on the Zelda know it. Contact the Resolute, Mr. Chobak. Have them bring us back. And tell them we'll need medical waiting for Lieutenant Bedrosian. Yes, Commander. Through your efforts, we were able to save almost a hundred Elidians from certain death. As for Lieutenant Bedrosian, well, Duval will do her best, but the prognosis isn't very encouraging. Lieutenant Bedrosian went above and beyond her duty. She deserves a commendation. I'll see what I can do. Commander Rydek, I heard what you did. The sacrifice you made for our sake. You saved not only my life, but the lives of my crew. An incredibly heroic deed. All of Elidia is in your debt. We cannot thank you enough. Just doing our duty, Admiral. I'm sure you understand. If you'll excuse us. Of course. How are we getting our away team back? Ambassador Spock and the rest of the senior staff are waiting for us in the briefing room to discuss just that. I wanted a chance for you and I to speak first, given the circumstances. While protocol might suggest we alert Starfleet about our situation, missing crew, the data breach, a possible threat from the Hotari or Khan, I think we're better off keeping this to ourselves, under our control. You know what's at stake for me here, and what is at stake for you, too. I can't afford another mission gone wrong. And I'm really counting on your support. I don't want to raise a false alarm just yet. But I have every confidence we can wrap this up before it gets any worse than it already is. I'll follow your lead. We can keep this under wraps for now. Always nice to know you have my back. One of the primary reasons I brought you on board. I made the right decision. Let's just get this resolved in behind us. And the sooner the better. I couldn't agree more. And we will. We're ready in the briefing room, Captain. On our way. Is there any update on our efforts to trace the Zeldi's warp signature? Unfortunately, no. Somehow they were able to mask the signature and block our ability to track their trajectory. I'm also concerned about what went with them. A Taconian energy source. Sidron referred to it as the Cartabula. Yes, I've been analyzing your tricorder scans. This Cartabula is more powerful than any energy source on record. It disabled our ability to warp and likely created the Ion Storm. We have to find that ship. It could be anywhere by now. Literally anywhere. The Hotari must know where the ship is headed. If you can even call them Hotari at this point. Whoever they are, they've cut off all communication. And our only source on the inside is now in sickbay. Tylus. The Takan also compromised our systems when Petty Officer Maris stole data from our computer core. We're assessing what was lost as we speak. It's just too soon to say exactly what they had access to. Starfleet needs to know about this. We're not contacting Starfleet until we fully understand the situation. There are too many unknowns. They stole our data. That's reason enough to warn Starfleet. But the Captain does have a point. It might be better to wait until we know more. We shouldn't take any chances. We should at least alert Starfleet that our system was compromised. I agree with Commander Rydak. We should let Starfleet decide how they want to handle it. And essentially tell them this mission was a failure before it's even over? No. I thought we discussed this. I want to speak with the Hotari and get to the bottom of this before we get Starfleet involved. 
I expect we'll meet resistance. The Hotari think we violated our neutrality by entering their minds. Assuming the negotiations are off, we no longer have an official role here. We still have a responsibility to the Hotari. And the Elidians. The Takana are a threat to both their civilizations. No. They're a threat to us all. The device Commander Rydek found in the Taconian Vault is an advanced delivery mechanism for a complex biogenetic transformation process. Meaning what, exactly? Not only are they bioforming innocent hosts, transforming them into Takan. They're taking the DNA and engrammatic data of a specific Deconian and displacing that of its host. It's a hostile takeover on a cellular level, bringing individual Takan back to life one by one. And what happens to the host? It's hard to say exactly. Some of their memories remain intact, but the implanted Taconian identity appears to have full control. In time, all that remains of the host may be lost entirely. It's an invasion. One victim at a time. Precisely. Petty Officer Maris called herself a scion of the flame, but the computer had no information about it. She also shot the hell out of my ship as she escaped and nearly killed a few of our crew. So we know this about those scions. They're dangerous. The Takan have crossed a line. That much is certain. However, Meeting with the Hotari could offer insight into their true intentions. Under the pretense of an apology for betraying their trust and trespassing on their territory. If we go to Hotari, we go expecting a fight. Phasers armed, transporters locked to all our comm badges, security officers on standby. Of course, we'll take every precaution. Come in ready for whatever they might try to do. The Cartabula gun, I can confirm we have regained warp capability and the use of our transporters. Excellent. Commander Ermot, see if we can arrange a meeting on Hotari as soon as possible. As Ambassador Spock suggested, under the pretense of an apology. Aye, Captain. Nice work, everyone. You're long overdue for a Deridium infusion. It looks like I am. I'll give you two a moment, but she needs her rest. I understand. Commander Rydek? Is that you? I thought I heard your voice. I'm right here. Where? Before you say anything, I just want you to know I don't blame you for what happened. I heard that last transport made it through. That was our mission, to save lives. So, I'm glad it was success. And Dr. Duval tells me she can get me my sight back. Eventually. I, I just hope this isn't the end of my career. Can't be much of a tactical officer if you can't see what's coming. But this is all I've ever wanted to do. The latest advancements in vision enhancement are truly remarkable. I wouldn't be surprised if you came back better than you ever were. I just want to be able to see again. That's all I'm asking. All right, you two. Lieutenant Bedrosian needs her rest, and you have an infusion waiting for you. I will check in on you soon. I promise. I'm gonna hold you to it. Aside from almost running out of Deridium, you're in good health. Nice to get some positive news for a change. You I don't worry about. The captain, however... Go on. You see it, don't you? He 
is desperate. Withholding intel from Starfleet just to save his reputation. That's not normal behavior for a captain. I was relieved you called him out on it. You've spent enough time with him now. Seen enough of how he runs the ship. If there's something wrong, as the ship's doctor, I need to know. Don't sugarcoat it. You know I wouldn't. To be honest, I'm worried about him. It seems like the stress of this mission is getting to him. He has so much riding on its success, and I am concerned he'll do something rash to ensure it. Good to know we see eye to eye on this. And I want to be clear, I care about Solano. I really do. I've been his doctor for years. There are more important things at stake than offending an old friend. If it gets any worse, you know where to find me. Jara. Monitor your Duridium levels. I'll be right back. How's your wound? Like it was never there. I feel lucky you were there with me. Without you, I'd be, well... Thank you for saving my life. Even with the wonders of your technology, it wouldn't have mattered if you'd left me for dead. I should be thanking you. You took that disruptor shot for me. Without you, I might be the one in sickbay, or worse. Well, I couldn't just let you die. Not after all you did to help. I won't forget it. We saw the truth down in those mines. What Citron and Galvin really are. Who they've become. The lengths they're willing to go to. What they did to that Lydian. It's hard to accept. That everything I thought I knew, so much was a lie. It's always better to know. No matter how awful, the truth is better than living with a lie. I am coming around to that thinking as well. Commander Rydek, you're needed on the bridge at once. What is it? The Hotari have agreed to meet. They haven't found us yet. Rescued. We have no idea when or if the Resolute is going to catch up. But if we can get access to the Zeldi systems, we might be able to figure out what the Takan are up to. You got somewhere we could do that? For how uptight the Elidians are, the cargo bay is kind of a mess. Come on, Carter. We need to stick with the tall guy. Huh. The Lydian consoles still have mechanical keyboards as a backup. Looks airtight and climate controlled. Must be where they put the precious cargo. Up there? All right. Etzelar, let's do this. The internal sensors. The what? When they scan the ship for life signs, they'll know right where we are. There must be devices that perform the scan. Right there. And there. There's several of them around the room. Got it. We'll disable them. How? They're too high to reach, even for me. Not too high for our phasers. Low power, Millie. Let's not set off any fire alarms. I got the ones over here. Got one. Another down. Hurry, Carter. I am. Only one left. 
Here it comes. It worked. They won't be able to detect us. That buys us some time. Now that the Zeldi has its power again, I might be able to access some of the ship's systems from here. I'll take care not to give away our position. The Takan might not even know we're still on board this ship. Miranda only saw us transport away. She probably thinks we're back on the Resolute. Miranda. Don't give up on her yet, Carter. For all we know, she was trapped, watching it happen. Fighting it the whole time. The person who shot at us wasn't Miranda. Don't think for a second that she turned on us. Because I don't. Neither do I. I know it seems like we could never trust her again. But maybe there's a way to turn her back and Miranda could help us stop the Takan. Here, on the ship. Just because the Trill joining is permanent doesn't mean the Takan bioforming has to be. I've heard enough of your prattling on about your friend. You have to think like a soldier. She's our enemy now. She'll be dealt with like the rest of the Takan. My friend Miranda is not responsible for what she's doing. The Takan have taken control of her mind. We certainly can't kill her for it. Speak for yourself. If anyone threatens the Empire, they are the enemy. It's just one life, and it's already been lost. You don't get to talk about Miranda. You don't get to ignore the truth. We don't like this any more than you do. The Takan are a threat to all of us. They turned our crewmates too. You really think they're gonna stop there? No. And yet we still risked our lives to come help you. And not everyone made it. I'll grant that you showed your grit and effectiveness. More than I can say about accessing ship systems. They block out helm control, propulsion. They're closing down systems faster than I can check them. Ah. Ah. They're always changing these interfaces. I can hardly keep up. All right, step aside. We'll take it from here. Fine, make yourselves useful. They're using a senior officer's access code to lock down our systems from the bridge. The Takan must have turned someone in command. Here's something. I can see the course they have plotted in. Long way from Hotari space. I hope the Resolute is all right back there. The Zeldi. That's where we are. That's not exactly news. The Lydian fleet has explored a lot of systems, but it's all in the opposite direction of where we're going. We're headed to the edge of the galaxy. Nothing but uninhabited systems along the way. And if we keep going, we'll leave charted space. A lot sooner than I like to think about, too. That can't happen. We need to take control and turn this ship around. Get back to the front lines of the battle for Olivia. We are on the front lines. They're going to do this all over the Quadrant. The whole Federation is at risk. That is a possibility, but it's already a reality for my people. I'm sure it's pretty damn real for the people who are trapped in their own bodies controlled by the Takan. You can't just turn your back on them. I'll take this ship without you if I have to. And I'll bring it back to Olivia, or I'll destroy it. I won't let it stay in the hands of the enemy. You want to get back to Olivia? You want your vengeance? You'll get it. I have every intention. So help us stop this ship. For Olivia. And for everyone. Very well. The most important thing is that we get control of this ship. So that we don't end up so far away that the Resolute can't ever catch up to us. And if we control the Zeldi, that also means they can't use that Cartabula thing. I'm not sure we can do much more from here. What's this? It's a data stream. It looks to be a two-way communication. Let me see if I could...
put it through a demultiplexing processor. Can you get that clearer? I'm trying. Okay. That should do it. Hello. Can you read me? It's Tosker. Is that you? Major. It's my lieutenant. Where are you? I'm here with some of the others. We're trapped in the ATP. Our artillery targeting platform. The bulkheads are sealed, and ruptured power conduits on the other side are discharging at high voltage. Major, we've seen Sidron and the other Atari. And if we can get free, I think we'll be able to overpower them and take back the ship. It's Oscar. Are you still there? It's Oscar. Are you still there? You shouldn't trust anyone else you meet. The Hotari have been transforming people on the ship. We've seen it happen. Bioforming. It's only a matter of time before any remaining crew are turned against us. You have to come and help us. I gotta ask. Are you sure that's really your comrade? It's Itasca. You're going to have to trust me. I know Lieutenant Itasca well. That's her. Clear and not under duress beyond our current circumstances. I'm sure of it. Trust goes both ways. We trust you. You trust us. I'll go with that. Until you give me reason not to. Back at you, Stretch. We'll make it to you undetected, and we'll free you from the ATP. We'll be ready and waiting, sir. I may not know the computers very well, but I know every inch of this ship. If I can get us there, safely, through the back routes. may approach. Your Majesty, an apology is in order. The Federation... Spare us your apologies, your excuses, your pathetic explanations. You said you were here under the pretense of peace, yet you trespassed into our minds. I should have known you were lying when you said the Hotari should have control of the minds. <laughs> Just a ruse to conceal your true intentions. We knew you were hiding something. We had to find the truth. I hope you were satisfied with what you found. Your Majesty, if I may. Her actions nearly caused a war. I was addressing the Queen. Galvin speaks for the Hotari now. Fortunately, we were able to resolve this ourselves despite your interference. The Illidians have agreed the mines will remain under Hotari control. We now recognize the Hotari as the sole authority in this region. Your presence here is no longer necessary. So you can consider the matter resolved. They never wanted the Federation involved. This was all just a ploy from the start. We never needed the Federation involved. But we're so thankful that you've come. That being said, the sooner you leave, the better. The hell we will. What about my crew trapped aboard that ship? Or what you did to my security team? The data you stole? I want to make one thing clear. No one is to leave Hotari space without Federation approval. No one. You think you have that power, when in fact you have none. You came here under the presumption you would be the ultimate authority. That you would show up and render judgment in this petty dispute over precious resources between lesser people. But instead, your arrogance and self-interest was your undoing. Blinding you to the real power at work here. Something far beyond your feeble imagination. We came at your request. 
to help solve the problem, not you create came one. Because I wanted to see the mighty Federation for myself, the greatest power in the galaxy. Needless to say, I was disappointed. They never wanted our help. They were setting us up from the start. Commander Rydak saw what you did in those mines. How you bioformed innocent people against their will and turned them into Takan. Takan. A word I haven't heard in a very long time. At the height of our power, the Takan Empire spanned hundreds of thousands of light years and trillions of Takonians. An empire that encompassed what is now considered Federation territory. What's yours was what's ours, so it feels only right that we reclaim what was lost. Everything you hold dear will be gone. The first of many painful losses to come. You do realize this will never work. The Federation will stop you no matter what it takes. Will they? From what I can tell, the Federation is little more than a loose assemblage of the weak and the misguided. But I certainly invite them to try. You might be surprised how many want to be part of the most advanced civilization the galaxy has ever seen. We will not stop until we've reclaimed what is rightfully ours. Imagine what a queen, a starship captain, or even a Federation ambassador could accomplish if their power was wielded by a truly superior entity. In the face of such impossible odds against an adversary so clearly more advanced in every way, the only logical choice is to submit. Never. Seize them. Get us out of here, now! Rydic to Resolute. Beam us out. You ever done something like this before? Close quarters combat? Infiltrating an enemy stronghold? Something like that. I once spent six days crawling through sewers during the siege of Tofar Ket to retake the Citadel there. That's just one of many campaigns I've served in. My dress uniform is well decorated. I'm glad we're here with you. We need your kind of experience. I should say you do. And I'll be glad to have Lieutenant Itasca with us. She fought shoulder to shoulder with me in that siege. So you're pretty close, huh? She's like... a daughter to me. She's saved my life more than once. She's more than just a comrade in arms. Don't worry. We'll get her and the others free. I'll worry less when that's been done. But once we have my comrades, proper soldiers, we'll be able to retake the bridge. Then, our fleets will catch up to us. The ATP is just down that corridor. Is this the artillery platform? This is the power distribution for the forward armament cluster. Well, there was combat here. Disruptor burns on the walls. Signs of a grenade detonation. I can see why they're trapped in there. But that's gonna be just as hard for us to cross. We'll need to find a way to get in there and shut down the power. The distribution conduits have been knocked loose. The current in those lines would be lethal. Is there any way to power those down? Each circuit has a control panel that regulates power to the magneto banks. I can track connections between the power lines and the control panels. I should be able to clear a safe path to your crew. We'll get the door open here. It's 
heavy. away from Barry with space. Better keep my distance. Made it. Barely. There's a lot of collateral damage out here. They backed us into a corner. We did that to drive them out. Put some space between us and the enemy. Ah! They're here. Get down! I think they've given up on capture. We'll never make it if we go back that way. You! Give me a hand with this! busy.
You can't just run in there. You must live to fight. We let the enemy take them. Hadri and Private Turo. They weren't the only ones. But if we hadn't, it would have been all of us. I'll have to live with that, and I'll answer for it when I die. It's not the Illidian way to leave one of our own behind. It's a sin to do so. We're not gonna die. Not if I have anything to say about it. It's more important that we win. When we were in there, trapped, we agreed that we had to live to fight. Hadri agreed. We said, if one of us was taken, the others wouldn't stop. We'd keep going, make our way to the bridge. They died so we could fight on. The Takan don't want them dead. They want to steal their bodies. And steal their minds. The Takan knows everything the host knows. That means they know our plan. They know we're heading to the bridge. Hylas, you should be in sickbay. I'll finish this. I couldn't just lie there knowing the entire fate of Hotari hangs in the balance. How did it go? You look exhausted. It went about as well as could be expected, under the circumstances. Oh, that's a relief, because I was fearing the worst. I heard a rumor that they'd made a deal, that the Illidians agreed to peace. After what we saw Sidron do to the diplomat in the mines, I could hardly believe there was hope, but then... Is that true? I'm afraid the truth is far worse than that. There's no deal. No. They're all Takan now. The Hatari, the Illidians. Everyone. No. That can't be true. I'm sorry. Where will I go? I can't go back. I don't have a home anymore. Everything I've ever known is gone. Hotari isn't lost yet. This is far from over. It will be your home again, I promise. Thank you. The Federation stands with the Hotari. You don't have to doubt it for a second. Yellow, alert. Commander Rydek, we need you on the bridge immediately. Commander. Good to have you back. You didn't opt for the ocular implants. Maybe someday. The visor was the best the Doc could do on short notice. We've got an Olydian ship, the Veskar, rapidly bearing down on our position. Or what was the Veskar. Now I'm not so sure. Bring it up on the view screen. 600 kilometers in closing. Still coming straight for us. Hmm. Hmm. Commander? Should we put our shields up? Just as a precautionary measure. I'd like to avoid escalating this any more than we have to. Whatever the hell this is. 400 kilometers in closing. Shields up. Ready, phasers. Shields up. Phasers ready. It's incoming. Lock phasers and open fire. Heavy damage. But deflectors still at full power? That bypassed our shields entirely. That's impossible. God damn it, return fire! Everything we've got! Rydek, modulate the shield frequencies. See if you can get us any cover. Commander, I've got I... this. Just keep firing. Shields still have no effect. That doesn't make sense. I'll try another. Come 
coming! How do they keep matching our shield frequency? They couldn't. Unless... They've compromised our shield algorithms. They can bypass our shields at will. What? Ah! Ah! Captain! He's out cold! Why'd they stop? Damage report. Running on emergency power. Major hull damage on decks four through seven. Warp core is stable and intact. We're completely vulnerable. Commander, we're being held by the Veskar. It's Galvin. On screen. Commander Rydak. Where's your captain? Not dead, I hope. At least, not yet. You're dealing with me. Is that a problem? One inferior life form is as good as another. I have to give you credit, Commander. You survived longer than I thought you would. But make no mistake, your shields are useless, your weapons ineffective, and there's nothing you can do. I could destroy you at any moment. But I'd rather hear your pleas for mercy first. Your existence is entirely in my hands. If you want to destroy us, then I invite you to do your worst. We'd rather die with honor than beg for your mercy. You may just get your wish. I've been thinking about what you said, Commander. That the Federation would stop me no matter what. Your performance in this encounter has not supported that claim. The Veskar's weapons are powering up. One day you'll be the one begging us for mercy. <laughs> I doubt that. I've lost their signal. Can you track their warp signature? Nothing. It's untraceable, just like before. Notify Ambassador Spock. I want everyone in the briefing room to discuss our options. What's the status of the repairs? Hull breach should be patched up in a matter of hours. Impulse power is at 67%. Should be fully restored soon. Still no luck tracking Galvin's warp signature. They've all but disappeared. Keep trying. Finding that son of a bitch is the best shot we've got. Commander Rydek, you had the con after the ship was attacked. What is your assessment? Given our current situation, and the losses we have suffered. I'd rather not fight this alone. We need to call for reinforcements. In that case, we might have an option. Portal 6-3, guardian of the Takan Empire. If anyone could find Galvin, it would be him. That's assuming he's willing to help us. True, but there's only one way to find out. Wouldn't we need to secure authorization from the Federation Council to contact him? The nearest Federation outpost is Anthoria. I can travel there by shuttle and inform them personally of the threat from the Takan. Meanwhile, the Resolute can travel to the Delphi Ardu system in search of Portal 63. I still have my doubts. I do not. Captain William T. Riker has first hand experience with the area and with Portal 63. His guidance will prove invaluable and should alleviate your concerns. 
Delphi Ardu 4 is a restricted zone for good reason. For all we know, we could be walking into a trap. Not to mention the high likelihood Portal 6-3's allegiance will be with the Takan. It's just too much of a risk. A waste of time. Time we can't afford to lose. Right now, we have no way of knowing where those two Elidian ships are, or where they're going. Another Taconian might be able to at least point us in the right direction. Or we're the ones pointing him right toward his fellow Takan, making the problem worse. I am inclined to agree with Commander Rydek. Her logic is sound. This portal may have knowledge that proves to be invaluable, including information on the nature of the Cartabula. We must act on the facts at hand. Then we'll give it our best. I'll arrange a meeting with Captain Riker. And I will speak with the Council. They need to understand the magnitude of the situation. I can leave for Andoria immediately. I wish you luck finding Portal 63. The very future of the Federation may rest in your hands. It takes a minimum of eight crew on the bridge to run the ship. So we can expect at least that many hostiles. If they bioformed Hadri, they know we're coming. Which means everyone needs to be ready for... Take cover! Now what? We need that door sealed. We can handle that. Where do you need us? There's an access panel there. You should be able to patch into the local system. We'll be shot getting there. I'll cover you. On my signal. Now! gravity inside the bridge. That'll throw anyone on the bridge right up into the ceiling. He'll never see it coming. Itasca, get ready to charge. Charge? Force and gravity polarity. Now! Amazing. Close it. How do we get them down? gonna do with them we don't have time to take prisoners so you're just gonna shoot them i haven't decided yet that's not just up to you i'm the ranking officer and we're not in your army they're a threat as long as they're alive carter finally some sense from starfleet i won't allow it you're an engineer not a soldier this is clearly my territory. You think you have enemy combatants here? This is a hostage situation. And Starfleet doesn't kill hostages. Each one of them has an innocent life inside. I'll keep watch on them. As will I. We can't let our guard down around the enemy. Petty Officer Diaz and I will figure out how to stop the ship. Let's hurry. The rest of the Takan could show up any minute. Crystals. They're all over this place. We're gonna be there in less than an hour. I can't let that happen. Hold on, it would take days to go this distance with our fastest ship. We're traveling at a warp factor many times greater than this ship should even be capable of. What are the engines doing to produce this kind of speed? Look here. It's navigational data. We saw that already. Headed to the edge of the galaxy. It's only a display. We couldn't use it to change course or alter speed. This console looks unaffected. Engines are 
red line, running at full power. But this main drive manifold is spiking way over nominal levels. Very dangerous. Even at 100% output, the warp cores wouldn't push this much plasma to the drive section. The reactor output matches the high speed, doesn't it? Whether it's these crystals, or the power from the cartabula, the Takana found a way to increase the engine output and top speed. We have to find a way to hit the brakes before we outrun anyone who could help us. We stop it, so they can't get this ship where they're going, and enact the next phase of their plan. That is, if they don't destroy us all first. I would have thought this ship would disintegrate going this speed. We do our part, and just worry about that. I don't know what more they have to their plan. People like this are never satisfied. There's always more that they want. And they are obviously going somewhere. I hate to think what the Cartabula could do if it was plugged into something it was meant to power. Crystals are Takan technology. They seem to be active, just like the rest of their tech. Tetrametric pulses. Tetrametric? It's the energy signature of Takan technology. Everything they make gives off this type of radiation. They're blocking the inputs. It's not responding at all. Everything I try, it just ignores me. Maybe we should try that other console. Good idea. Resolute can't catch up to us. We're in a whole different kind of trouble. It's the Takan language. From what I can tell, the ship's systems are actively responding to input. Which is the opposite of how most bridges work. They usually send commands, not receive them. It's from an intrusive program. This control station won't do us any good either. What have they done to this bridge? Consoles running themselves, some clogged up with crystals that are sending off tetrametric pulses. But none of this is sending signals outward. It's receiving. Flying the ship from somewhere else. That should be impossible. But it explains why there's less than a full bridge crew. If they aren't flying the ship from the bridge, where are they controlling it from? Careful where you point that thing. It's not active. I can't see any way this would work as a weapon. It's dead. Out of ammo? I'm not sure. That's everything. We got some answers. I don't like what they tell us, though. If we can learn nothing else, then what's left is to make these Takan talk. And if they don't, we'll dispose of them. Hey, that's not how we do this. That is enough from you! I thought that thing was useless. It was! No power! Until he touched it. Weapons must be bio-coded. Our technology will only work for one of our kind. I can assure you. This weapon works just fine for me. Slow down, Arminta. <laughs> you can't control this ship with a disruptor. But I can use it to control you.
The Titan's communications officer says Captain Riker will be ready in just a moment. You need to see this. The report on the data breach. Damn. It's worse than I'd hoped. They didn't just compromise our shields. They stole the shield algorithms for all of Starfleet as well. Meaning every ship is potentially vulnerable to attack. Making this so much worse than it already was. Given the potential consequences, we should notify Starfleet as soon as possible. I don't disagree, but uh, I'll reach out to Ambassador Spock about it. I don't want to cause a panic. And I doubt he does either. I have Captain Riker for you. Let's not mention any of this S.H.I.E.L.D. business to Riker just yet. Put him through. Captain Riker, this is my first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. My pleasure. Sir. I wish we were all meeting under better circumstances. So do I, although you and I have actually met before. We have. I was a young lieutenant on the Potemkin. You were first officer on the Tuckerman. I piloted you and our science officer in a shuttle to survey quantum residence in the planetary rings of Residia 6. Ah, oh, yes. Now I remember. You know, he gave me some good advice that day about a very difficult job. Yours. Well, I'm not one to turn down some words of wisdom, sir. Then let me ask, as first officer on a starship, where does your responsibility lie, first and foremost? To the captain, the crew, or the ship itself? Oh, this old chestnut. I am curious to hear what she says, though. Well, without the ship, we'd be in a lot of trouble. So... Anybody ever choose the ship when you asked? I can't say that they have. The truth is, it's a trick question. Every situation is different, and there are no easy answers. And in some cases, it might not be any of those three. It could be the Prime Directive. Or the mission. Yes, so perhaps we should get to the matter at hand. When you were with the Enterprise, you encountered a Takan entity known as Portal 63. The Enterprise was held captive in orbit until you were able to convince him to let the ship go. All of which is detailed in the mission report. What we want from you is what we can't get from the report. What can we use to get Portal 63 to help us? I've often thought about that over the years. How a small difference in the encounter could have led to disaster. The most important thing is, don't let him push you around. He can appear as a man or as a godlike projection. He'll test you, but don't be overwhelmed by the pageantry and theatrics. I'll stand up to him. You can trust in that. Good, but that's just the first step. Portal is full of bluster and bravado, but he can be reasoned with. And that's my other piece of advice. You want to appeal to him rationally. You don't want him thinking you're acting out of fear. But we are afraid of the Takan, and with good reason. He's not the sort to suffer fools, and he'll lose interest if he feels his time is being wasted. I suppose that's one thing we have in common. What other levers do we have with him? Is he susceptible to flattery? Who isn't? And if you're good enough to play off his ego, even an entity as advanced as he is won't realize that's what you're doing. What if he won't cooperate and we have to face these to con ourselves? Then we have a much bigger problem on our hands. What I mean is, in the 16 years since you discovered this outpost, there has to have been research, battle plans for what to do about the Takan if we encountered more of them. I need to know what they are. If I had that answer, it would have been the first thing I told you. We both know Command has had their share of hidden plans in the past. Like Admiral Hansen and Captain Shelby's Special Projects Division at Starfleet Tactical, devising new ways to take on the board. Trust me, this isn't some Starfleet conspiracy to keep you in the dark. But if you two don't think you're equipped to make contact, you need to tell me now. Because there is no silver bullet here. Now's not the time to hesitate. I need to know you're up to this. Were you equipped to meet Portal 63 all those years ago? I'm here, aren't I? Yes, you are. And we have the benefit of your experience on our side. Fair enough. There was a special task force that considered the Takan, and I was part of it. 
But because there were no other signs of the Empire, we determined the best course of action was to create a restricted zone around the Delphi Ardu system. I have my concerns, but I'll clear the way with the brass for your travel into the restricted space. Just remember what I've told you. And it wouldn't hurt to read some Sun Tzu en route. Or Marcus Aurelius. Anything else? Your advice is well taken, Captain Riker. No matter what he throws at us, we'll stand up to this Takan Guardian. I'm sure you will. Rest assured, the Federation is taking this threat very seriously. You won't be alone out there for too long. Thank you, Captain Riker. One more thing. Ambassador Spock said that Takan stole some data from your central computer. What's that all about? We're still assessing the extent of the breach. Nothing to report as of right now. That's it? Ambassador Spock suggested it was something more serious. One thing we know is that they stole Starfleet shield algorithms. The shield algorithms? That could jeopardize every ship in the fleet. We're still making sure our assessment is accurate. We don't want to raise alarms unnecessarily. This is as real as it gets, Solano. I have to talk to Starfleet Command now, so I think this conversation has come to an end. I really do hope you get Portal 6-3 and find those to con before this gets out of control. Riker out. I specifically said I wanted to keep this under wraps. I thought we had an understanding. Riker's ship is at risk. They all are. I can't believe you would want to keep that from him. That's one more thing I'll have to answer for. Now I have to think about the damage control of it all. You're dismissed. It's the Automated Federation warning buoy. Transmitting the disable code Captain Riker provided. That was unpleasant. Commander Ermont, what are the conditions of our systems? All internal systems operational. Commander Westbrook, what are your scans of the planet? Nothing out of the ordinary. No sign of this outrageously powerful Takan being? I'm running a magneton scan now, but so far, nothing. Where are you? Prep your way, team. We don't know if Portal 6-3 will cooperate. He's not an asset. He's an enemy. So be ready for anything. Prove you're worth keeping alive for a little while longer. I cannot stop this ship any more than you could stop the tides. Not good enough. The impotent threats of a lower life form do not sway me. I will not bend to you. I was born 600,000 years ago. But a new age dawns today. I liked you a lot better when you were Ryan Kapoor. Pain in the ass sometimes, but a stand-up guy when it counted. You weren't friends with the one who gave up this body. He didn't give it, you took it. And all the others. My name is Zan Glosa. I was born in the final days of the Age of Makto. I am but one of many. We who took a leap of faith across the bridge of time to be reborn in these bodies. Eventually, one of you will break. Understand how overmatched you truly are. This craft was nothing before we imbued it with the speed required by our mission. And the Cartabula produces enough energy to drive an entire fleet of ships like this one. But when we wake the Aphelion, we won't need a fleet. The Aphelion? Only then will you understand the might of the Takan Empire. Reborn in this time. Well, I can promise you. Whatever you're after, this Aphelion, you won't get there. We'll destroy the Zeldi and everything on it if we have to. You can't do that. The Cartabula would rip through the fabric of the universe if it were critically damaged. He's right. Come on! 
This goes from bad to worse unless you do what they say. <clears throat> Alive. He can't stop the ship. Then he will. Or we cut off his hands and use them ourselves. The moment I reduce speed or change our heading, the others will go. First, they'll just resume course from elsewhere. Trivial matter. And then, they will come here. For you. This is a dead end. Well, wouldn't you want that? You take the ship off course, your friends come here to your rescue. So why are you warning us? Because I value my own life. When my fellow Scions come, and they will come, I expect you'll all act like the savages you are, and a battle will ensue. We've all died once. I don't intend to do so again. I won't touch those controls. If you want to get us killed, do it yourselves. You fear death. There's a way to stop this ship for good, and he knows how. He just needs more pressure. What kind of pressure? We heard him. He'll talk. Trust me. That's against Starfleet protocol. You're not on a Starfleet ship. Your protocol does not apply. We take the action that will lead to our victory. Don't assume your moral code takes precedence above all others. I get the impression you know how to make people talk. Think you can break his arm? No, don't! What the hell, Carter? We don't torture people! Did you forget what uniform you're wearing? What it stands for? He'll live. Isn't that what you want? Don't you twist my words like that. I have only just begun. Stop, please! Wait! The warp cores. Our technology is amplifying the ship's output, and it still relies on the warp cores to provide plasma to the engines. Disable those, and the ship grinds to a halt. Sabotage. This displays for all life forms on the ship. This is where the infiltrators are. The central artery of ship systems. Sensors. Propulsion. Weapons. And this is engineering. It's deserted. If I can get us there, can you cripple my ship? Not something I'd normally ask, but I'm coming around to it. Well, usually I'm the guy fixing the things that go wrong on a starship. I'm sure I can figure out a way to break it. You may even find you like destroying things. This plan of yours has one problem. It strands us. Left out of the fight when there is a war going on. Our fight is here. Now, this is how we do the most good for the Empire. For the Empire. So, Carter, you didn't beam out after all. I thought you'd escaped when we boarded. I had almost hoped you'd made it off. And Nilly's there with you too, right? It's good you two are together. I know you're here, Carter. Your technology is so simple to us. You're not a fighter. I know it. You know it. That's why you're hiding. Somewhere on this ship. But the Takan Empire has so much to offer you. Think of all the knowledge lost for half a million years that you'd have access to. I know you want more from life. And I want to show you what you could be a part of. Not just the wonders you've already seen from us. In our time, we had the power to move stars. Carter, you have a thirst for discovery. And a part of you would remain to experience the things I can show you. But if you try to fight it... You have Miranda's voice, but you're not her. And you don't know me. Of course I do. I remember... Well... I remember everything. I remember us. So I'll just explain the reality of what you're up against. Every one of us on this crusade has fought wars more brutal and consuming than you could fathom. But I want to reach a peaceful resolution to this. Carter, we have a plan for you. And for the others, too. We don't want to have to destroy you. 
But what's this plan you have? Is it the one where you steal our bodies and erase our minds? That's a simplistic view of it. Your memories would live on within us. We can continue this conversation in person. I'll see you on the bridge very soon. Our comm badges. She's tracking our location with them. If we have to use force to free our fellow Scions, there will be casualties. We can't stay here. And we need to disable the transmitters. Where'd you go? You don't want to talk to me? She's trying to keep you talking. I mean, I get it. Got it. Mine's done too. Time to hit the road. You've forgotten something. They know where we're going. Set to stun. You're not going to shoot a guy who's unconscious, are you? You keep getting in my way. You already broke his arm. What more do you want to do? I want to eliminate loose ends. And I did that for you. You two forget you're on the same side? Come on! Let's move it. Our coordinates match the exact location where Riker met Portal 6-3. Unlike Riker's team, we beam down without a problem. It's... quiet. Portal has to know we're here. If he won't come to us, we'll go to him. Spread out. Already gave it a scan. Dead. The whole planet feels like it's been turned to stone. Doctor? Commander? Keeping an eye on those duridium levels? Good. Last thing we need are your cells destabilizing on a hostile alien planet. If I recall right, Geordi LaForge transported in here, hanging upside down. I guess we're lucky we were spared the indignity. Anything unusual, Commander? It's all unusual, to be honest. We have precious little data on this planet, so brief was Captain Riker's visit. Anything he didn't see himself is a total unknown. We deal with unknowns all the time. Part of the job. I'm accustomed to dealing with the unknown from my station on the bridge. This is where Portal 6-3 projected his image. He was guarding this bridge. That has to mean something. We'll move forward when you're ready, Commander. Follow me. Ends here. Is it me, or did that path just disappear? There was a path there a moment ago. There must be an explanation. Tetrametric pulses. 
Same energy as the other Takan technology. Most of the crystals appear dormant. What's different about this one? Readings indicate there's a cavity in the rock right behind it. We could try melting a hole through the wall with our phasers. Worth a try. Whoa! An illusion. I'm sure that wall was as real as the rest of them. I felt it. It's almost like our holodeck technology, but far more advanced. The crystals must be absorbing the energy from our phasers. I'm picking up something. A biosignature. It's faint, but it's there. With me. Another dead end. Or another illusion. Crewman LaRue, if you would. <sighs> Duval to Resolute. Beam Crewman LaRue directly to medical. Is he okay? Yeah. He'll live. Not all crystals work the same, it seems. Don't fire your phasers at any crystals unless we're sure they're putting out the same pulses as before. Commander, I may be able to speed up the process. I can now detect many different wavelengths of radiation simply by looking. The Takan radiation is unusual, so I can't quite clear it all up, but I was able to eliminate many of the non-tetrametric crystals. Your tricorder should warn you. That's an enormous help. Thank you, Lieutenant. It's my honor. Tetrametric. Good sign. Commander! Look at that. Trust, but verify. Indeed. We don't have any data about what's below the surface on Delphi Ardu 4. And I don't feel a particularly strong urge to find out. Then that makes two of us. I wonder if this place was always so lifeless. Good.
Tetrametric. Better go see what's different. Is clear. Good work, Commander. We'll make sure it's safe. Incredible. The plants here are actually alive. Is this the biosignature you detected, Doctor? No. Not a match. Tetrametric. Then it's creating an illusion as well. Based on the data we have so far... Only one thing left to do. Doctor, be ready to beam us out if it turns out we're wrong. Duval to Resolute. Lock transporter on away team. this in any Federation record. The plants. Barbarians. It's him. How dare you disturb me? I'd hoped you had enough sense to leave of your own accord, but here you stand. <laughs> Fools. In another time, I would have destroyed you and your ship simply for setting foot in this place. Fortunately for you, that time has passed. Portal 6-3, Guardian of the Takan Empire. We've come a long way to meet you. Guardian? I am guardian of nothing. The Takan no longer exist. Don't care to be reminded. If this is why you've come, then you should leave. Now. I'll cut right to it. The Takan have returned. Returned? My people have come back? How can that be? I've been alone for so long. If it is true, how did they return? Taconian technology made it possible to enable the transfer of consciousness from one being to another after physical death. We call it bioforming. A group of Taconians calling themselves Scions of the Flame used it to reawaken after hundreds of millennia. Scions of the Flame? Is something wrong? I'd hardly call them Takan. They were a radical faction with beliefs outside the mainstream. Beliefs that lesser life forms should serve as vessels to ensure Tacon immortality. You want me to help you destroy them. That's why you've come. You want to destroy these scions. There is a war looming that could engulf the Quadrant. We want you to help us bring about peace before it gets to that point. Peace always comes at a cost. They have an incredibly powerful energy source they call the Cartabula. These Scions have the Cartabula. And they've used it as a weapon against us. I will speak with you alone. What are you doing? Where are we? 
Where's my team? They are safe where we left them. That the science have stolen the Cartabula is deeply concerning. And to be honest, I'd rather speak with you alone, John and Rydick. Your colleagues don't know what it means to be the last of one's kind. You and I are remnants of fallen civilizations. The Kobliad, the Tikal. One dying, one dead. Our species could not be more different, but we both know the meaning of loss. The others wouldn't understand. It's beyond their ability to comprehend. We're more alike than you might realize in that we accept the inevitability of loss. If only you understood the glory of the Tikal Empire's past. Tell me, why spend your days away from your own people when so few of them are left? Why live your life working for this federation to which the Coplia do not even belong? And submit yourself to their authority? It makes no sense. Not by my logic. The federation isn't an authority to be obeyed. At its heart, it's a set of principles meant to ensure the survival and safety of all species regardless of their origin. You told Riker you'd wait until you were needed. You're needed now. We need you. As much as it pains me to learn the Cartabula has fallen into the hands of the Scions, my services are not up for offer. To be chosen as a portal was to give one's entire self to the cause of protecting the Tacon Empire. I left behind everything I know, and now you want me to turn against my own people. A betrayal of my oath, and everything I vowed to protect. The Tacon had their time. The Empire rose and fell like so many others. What you call bioforming, we thought of as a marginal science. But if these reborn Tacon plan to restore the Empire, is that a disaster to be avoided? Taconian technology is so advanced, it could save millions of species currently on the brink of extinction, including your own. And at the price of a small few, think of how the many could benefit. Instead, it sounds as if you are reacting out of fear before you have a full understanding of what's at stake. I don't think you've given this full consideration. You may have more to gain than to lose. The Takan Empire is gone. It had its opportunity and proved unable to survive. There must have been a reason the Takan have faded to a distant memory. It ran its course. And those of us who are here now deserve to choose our own fate. You said the Tacon vanished for a reason. I cannot claim our empire was without sin. I'm curious to see these scions masquerading as true Tacon. So I will go with you, and we shall find them. But when we do, I will judge them myself as a guardian of the Tacon. To understand their true intentions, for better or worse. It's certainly your right to make your own decisions. I won't tell you otherwise. Very well. I'll return to you. Commander! 
Hold your fire. I'm all right. He's coming with us. We assumed the worst. She's perfectly fine. Now then, shall we? All right. We can beam up your... Do you have any equipment or tools? Team plus one, ready to beam up. Four warp cores. That's interesting. Redundancy. If one goes down in battle, we can still operate. Makes this more difficult, though. This ship can maintain warp with half the cores offline. We'll need to disable three of them. Well, where are the engine schematics? Power flow routing charts. We're soldiers, not engineers. I thought you would know what to do. All that talk about being soldiers, and look what it comes down to. You need a couple of engineers. Yes, we do. Lucky for you, that's our specialty. You at least know where we should start? This way. sense since they've been producing a max output since we left Otari space. No ship can run for very long like that. Not before a catastrophic failure hits. It's right on the edge. We just need to figure out a way to give it a push. I bet that console down there could tell us a few things. we do, we need to make sure the Takan can't undo it. So we need a way to permanently disable the reactors that won't destroy the ship and kill us all in the process. You thinking what I'm thinking? Warp, Warp core ejection. ejection. So the question is, how do we make it happen? The reactor coolant system is operating at emergency containment levels. It's just barely keeping the temperature in check. Maybe we can use that. If it gets this high, their system considers a reactor breach imminent. Like we saw on the bridge, all four warp cores are operating at full capacity. The safety protocols don't look much different from the Resolute. Breach protection. Reduce output, command override. Cease matter, antimatter flow, command override. Emergency warp core ejection. Computer control. Even command functions can't override one of the most crucial safety measures. So the protocol's still active. That's good. Looks like if sensors show a core is about to rupture, the computer will eject it automatically rather than risk a breach. So we need to increase the warp core's temperatures. If we destroy the coolant regulators, there won't be anything to keep these reactors from going over. And it will trigger the ejection. Let's peel these suckers open. I'll take that one. I'll take the one next to it. The second you two start dumping cores, the Takan will know we're here. We'll be vulnerable. 
stuck in one place while you work. Start thinking about an escape plan. I have a feeling we're gonna need one. We'll barricade the door. Work quickly. We might not have our tools, but our phasers can do this in a pinch. We better get this right. If we foul it up and this whole thing goes boom, we don't know how much damage that cartabula will do. Listen, the best way to make sure something goes wrong is to stress. Keep your mind on the job, we'll be okay. Yeah, we will. It's not a Starfleet warp core, but the coolant regulator has to be in here somewhere. up. Warning. Warning. Warp core output at critical level. Ejecting core. Okay. Now they're definitely gonna know we're down here. Warp core output at critical level. Ejecting core. Just one more to go. They're here. They're cutting through the door. We don't have much time. Okay, same as before. We just gotta... I 
Tasker. Can you climb? I'll see you on the parade grounds of Sorella, my friend. <laughs> You too. Calm yourself, child. <gasps> it will all be better soon. So much I want to ask you. There's so little I can tell you. I'm a portal, not a scientist, but I'll certainly do my best. I can only assume this is one of your older starships. One would think, given the importance of your mission, they might send a ship of a more recent vintage. The Resolute is primarily a research vessel, if that's what you mean. Not a warship. Although, she has been known to hold her own in a fight. Against what? Something wrong? Not at all. The galaxy has grown more diverse since the days of the Takan Empire. Because you conquered everyone who didn't look like you. To the contrary. Most lesser civilizations willingly join the Empire to enjoy the benefits of an advanced way of life. But that expansion came with its own set of problems, so... I admire your ability to diversify without creating conflict. That was always our challenge. And perhaps... ultimately our downfall. The Federation prides itself on its inclusiveness. I'd say it's one of our greatest strengths. As the Vulcans say, Infinite diversity in infinite combinations. Interesting. I'd be curious to meet one of these Vulcans. If this is the best you have, then so be it. To locate this scion, Galvan, I'll need full access to your ship's systems. 
full access? Huh. You must be out of your mind. No. I'm right here. Completely in my mind. Given this is merely a research ship, I won't be able to find him without it. Perhaps I should have made that clear up front. That shouldn't be a problem. Excellent. Solano's gonna flip when he hears this. I'll see you on the bridge. Captain Solano, I'd like to introduce you to Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Pleasure to meet you, Captain. Likewise. I can't say I've ever met a portal before. There is no modern equivalent. Not within the Federation, at least. He's been kind enough to agree to help us find Galvin. I am at your service. To whatever extent I can be of help. If nothing else, I'm sure you're happy for a change of scenery. You spent 600,000 years at your post. That certainly takes an uncommon level of dedication. We all have our duty. Of course. But I'm curious. You were stationed there in preparation for what, exactly? Any and all threats to the Empire. An Empire that no longer exists. Which suggests you weren't very successful. You said you needed my help. I didn't come here to be insulted. Perhaps that was a mistake. I'd be happy to return to Delphi Ardu at any time. And we do need your help. Absolutely. And we are grateful that you decided to come. And your captain has an odd way of expressing his gratitude. I'm merely curious where your allegiances might lie. And clearly it's with the Takan. Yes, Captain. You have found me out and exposed my true loyalties to the Takan, not to the Scions of the Flame, who do nothing more than tarnish us in name and reputation and don't deserve to be called Takan. That's why I'm here. And if you'd be so kind as to give me access to your ship's systems, we can get on with it, and you can stop wasting my time. Access to our systems? That's completely out of the question. Tell me that's not what you promised. We're vulnerable enough as it is. And now we're supposed to give him access to everything? Captain, I know it's a risk. But right now it's our best shot at finding Galvin and that ship. Here she was, naive enough to believe it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Little did she realize the levels of ignorance and incompetence she was up against. If you're not enjoying your visit to our ship, We'd be more than happy to let you wither away back on your pathetic little rock. Captain? You clearly do not appreciate the magnitude of the threat the science pose. So myopic is your focus on your own ego. I will not be leaving until they have been found. Commander Rydek, a word. And to think. I waited 600,000 years for this. You realize this puts me in an incredibly difficult position. I was against seeking him out from the start. But now, to give him access to our systems? It's insane. And you somehow expect me to believe his allegiance is with us? You heard what he said in there. There's no way we can trust him. We talked about this on Delphi Ardu. The reason he's here is because he's with us, not them. He came to help us, and he wouldn't be here otherwise. We can't afford to get this wrong. We sought him out for a reason. To help him find our missing crew, Galvin, and those Elidian ships. This is the plan we agreed to with Ambassador Spock. Which I never liked. But here we are. You know what this mission means to us. Not just for the Federation. But for me personally, I can't afford another screw-up. Losing the shield algorithms was bad enough. This... This could be the end of my career. We'll take every precaution to make sure we get what we need. I'll keep a close eye on him myself. I appreciate that. I'm going to trust your instincts on this one. I just hope you're right. For both of our sakes. Let me know if you find anything. We're good. You may begin. 
I will, of course, have to make a few modifications. What kind of modifications? To find Taconian technology requires Taconian technology. If this Cyan Galavan modified his ships, then I must do likewise to yours. The galaxy is nearly infinite in size and complexity. This may take a moment. How long I found will it something. take? There you are. What is it? Galvin? Someone is using Taconian technology. I can't get the precise bearings, but it's located in the Palisades cluster. I'll let the captain know. Rydic to Solano. I think Portal may have located Galvin. I'll be right there. I'm getting all kinds of interference. Almost impossible to lock on the energy signature. Where's he hiding? In the Palisades cluster. Interesting. Can you lock in on the location? Not until you get me closer. Lieutenant Handar. Set a course for the Palisades Cluster. Aye, Captain. Well, I suppose I owe you an apology. You were right after all. That's what I get for questioning the advice of my first officer. You always have my back. No apology necessary. Your concerns were valid. Nonetheless, I should learn to trust your instincts, which were absolutely right. Nice work. Let me know if you find anything more. Will do. What's wrong? I didn't want to say anything until I was certain. But the reason for the interference is simple. There's a Taconian device on this ship being used to block the signal. Whoever planted it was exceptionally clever. They knew how and where to hide it. But they have underestimated my abilities. Engineering. Take care of the Taconian device. And I can find Galvan for you. It's designed to interfere with all transmissions. Or at least delay and confuse the effort to find Galvan's ship. Hold on. My understanding is that Takan technology requires a Takan to operate. Is there another Takan on this ship? The science could have someone on this ship doing everything they can to stop us from finding Galvan. Don't worry, I'll get this fixed. We're going to find that ship. Engineers would have found this device already if it wasn't well hidden. Better to rely on my tricorder. Hmm, there's a lot of noise in here. I should scan the device putting out the most radiation to filter it out. better. Most other radiation sources in here are well contained. There's definitely tetrametric radiation nearby, but even with the gain boosted, it's getting drowned out by other sources of radiation in here.
a little bit of harmless radiation leakage here, but enough to mask the tetrametric pulses. Easy enough to cancel out. There's still something drowning out the tetrametric radiation. I need to find it so I could filter it out as well. Jeffrey's tubes thump harmonics from all over the ship. I'll filter that out. There we go. I'm getting a clear tetrametric signal now. Found it. Excuse me, do you belong here? Commander Rydek. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know it was you. Good to see you again. Likewise. You've been working hard? Yes, sir. Always room for improvement, just like you said. What uh, are you doing back here? I, I don't mean to pry, but... First officers don't usually go digging around engineering compartments. Just a routine systems check. We've been having problems with our comms lately. Oh, that's news to me. I haven't heard anything about it. Probably because the comm system isn't working. Have you seen anyone else in here recently that might seem out of the ordinary? Maybe someone who doesn't work in engineering. Not that I can think of, but I can ask around. I'm here almost all the time. Maybe someone else noticed something? That would be great. Just be discreet about it. I don't want anyone to be alarmed. Discretion is my specialty. Well, I'll leave you alone already. Oh, come to think of it, that Hotari woman was down here earlier with Dr. Duvall finishing the last of the bioscans. Tylus? That would be out of the ordinary, right? Thank you. Maybe Tylus saw something. Tylus, can I speak to you for a moment? Of course. Is something wrong? There's something happening. I may need your help. This is important. How can I help? When you were in engineering with Dr. Duval, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Or anyone? Not particularly. Why? I found this, hidden in a compartment down there. That's Taconian technology. Does that mean there's a Scion on board? But Dr. Duval bioscanned everyone. Every deck, every crew member, I've seen the logs. She couldn't have been more thorough. We have to trace every contact, starting with engineering, which is where the device was planted. At least that narrows the list. But we still have to go back quite a while. Whatever it takes. It could be anyone. That includes both of us. You want me to get scanned? Better to know for sure, right? I'll admit, I was around the Scions as much as anybody. I would feel more comfortable if you did. I understand. Clear. Now it's your turn. Sure. Clear. Don't sound so surprised. You spend plenty of time with the Scions as well. You never know. Let's get to it. The search starts in engineering. Whoever planted the device most likely did it within the last few hours. So I'll start by running a scan, tracking everyone who came through engineering over the last day, in reverse order. This could take forever to sort through the number of people that were in engineering. Cross-referencing this list with everyone who's traveled to Hotari. Mm, that helps. 
filtering for outliers. People who don't work in engineering. Now this is manageable. I'll filter out the duplicates. Let's see who's left. No. This can't be right. What? Of the people that went to Hotari and visited engineering, it could only have been... Captain Solano. According to this, he was here while you went down to Delphi Ardu 4. Which would have been the perfect opportunity. And no one would question him. He's the captain. As much as I hate to admit it. Assuming it's true. It does explain why he was so opposed to getting help from Portal. And he made several trips to Otari. So they had plenty of opportunity to target him. What happened when Dr. Duval bioscanned Captain Solano? That's just it. She never did. How is that possible? Something more urgent will always come up. There was nothing she could do. But performing a bioscan is the only way to be absolutely sure. That's not going to be easy. First thing I need to do is get this device to Portal. Be careful. And good luck. I'll need it. I found the device. Interference is gone. I have located Galvin's ship more precisely. He's in the Usonia system. So then it worked. This whole region was one of the most sacred for the ancient Takan. What many consider the birthplace of our civilization. See these comets and planetoids in the outer orbits? Based on their current trajectory, that's Galvin's destination. And legend tells us it's the location of what was once our largest arsenal. Not that we needed it in the late stages of the Empire, but it was there as a precaution nonetheless. What kind of weapons are in this arsenal? Uh, it's difficult to know what would have survived from the time of the Empire, but be assured that the damage they have done so far by altering your current technology will be minuscule compared to proper Taconian firepower. If Galvin and the other Scions secure the arsenal, they will become extremely dangerous. My people had such power at the height of the Empire. The Dakon were as gods, keeping absolute control over countless worlds. I must speak with them directly. However, the presence of this device is worrying. It's highly likely it was placed here by a Scion hidden among your crew, and it is unlikely this interference device was the Scion Saboteur's only trap. If we reach Galvin and the Saboteur cripples your ship, we will be at their mercy. Even my powers will not be able to protect us. Do you know who it is? They may well do more damage if left alone. Time is not on your side. I'm fairly convinced they bioformed Captain Solano. I knew there was a reason I didn't like him. That explains it. Bioforming was so rare in the time of the Empire that I am not able to detect if it has taken place. Proof of your claim is something you will have to produce yourself. Then we have to bioscan him. I'll talk to Dr. Duvall. That's quite the claim. Told me you were worried about him. But I never imagined this was what was wrong. I wouldn't be asking you if there was any other possibility. That would explain why Solano has been too busy for a bioscan lately. As the ship's doctor, you have the authority to declare him unfit to serve. If you're right, this is the worst case scenario. Challenging your own captain is a tall order. Are you sure you're prepared for this? If you fail, that's it. The end of your career. Maybe your life. I don't know if I would be on my own. But with your support, I'm sure we can do it. Now that smooth talking may come in handy. I'm in. But we can't pull this off with just the two of us. 
I technically have the authority to make Solano undergo a scan, but in reality, he can and will refuse to do it. We need at least another member of the senior staff to support your claim, or this could all blow up in our faces. You better think long and hard about who you can trust. Enhancements must be able to brute force limited bursts of warp output. Yeah, but they won't get to wherever they were headed at this rate. They're just limping along now. So where does that put us? Maybe I can answer that. I got the ship's heading. They've changed course. Drastically. Looks like they're headed here. The Usonia system. They might stop there. Can we use the Zeldi's comms to signal your fleet? Comm systems are locked. Grab hold! these short warp jumps. They're going to tear it apart. Zeldi is still made by Olydian hands, despite all this Takam corruption. We'll hold. Then we just gotta stay safe until Starfleet can find us. Your people is there somewhere you go when you die? Life after death? No. On my home world, some people think they can cheat death in a way by joining with the Trill symbiont. But that's not a life to me. Hmm. What about you? Is there another plane of existence for you? With every passing battle. I think... There's just... No way for us to know what happens after we die. Really? Maybe there's something more, maybe not. But I can't discount the possibility. You can't prove a negative. Then maybe you can understand this. My people have a special journey. When Olydians die, we rejoin our comrades, family, and ancestors. On the parade grounds of Cirella? That is just one part of it, but... Yes. Death is not the end for us. So, even if some part of Itasca remains, by letting the Dakarn use her body, at best we are delaying the inevitable next step for her. At worst, we are leaving her as a prisoner in her own mind. You want to save the Transformed. So do I. Now that I've seen it happen, does it make me a hypocrite to say he has a point? What if we can't get them back? We can't leave them like that, right? I think Itasca would want to be released. I know it's awful to think about, but... If they're still alive, we can still try to help them. We lose that option once they're dead. I had a sister. A twin. It's... very rare among the Trill. You never told me that. She was one of the youngest hosts to ever join with the Symbian sentient creature that lives in our body. It's considered a great honor. The symbiont can bring centuries of knowledge and wisdom to the host. But sometimes, the symbiont personality suppresses the host entirely. My sister was the closest person in the world to me. I knew she would be different after joining. But she drew more and more distant. The room we shared growing up was foreign. 
affects the both of us. And eventually she, or whoever she'd become, cut me out entirely. So I left for Starfleet and swore I'd never go back. I couldn't stand the thought of seeing her. You should try to see her again. When all this is over, maybe things have changed for her after you've been away for years. I, I couldn't go back. Not now. You remind me of Vitaska. I do. Bonds are not made by what runs through your veins, but the blood you spill together. Vitaska was my family in that way. I want you to know there is nothing I won't sacrifice to win this fight. But if we're lucky enough to survive, I'd be honored if you'd count me as one of your tribe. As Itasca was. Even a couple of engineers like us? Don't talk about things going wrong and don't leave it up to luck. We gotta make sure we win this thing. True enough. They not cease this madness. What is this place? Is that the Veskar? Another one of yours? Not anymore. They've corrupted it. Just like the Zeldi. Now there are two ships. Did this just get better or worse? It certainly doesn't bode well for the crew of the Veskar. So many lives. Stolen. We're really at the heart of this fight now. We just gotta figure out what we're gonna do about it. This doesn't look like the Aphelion. What are they doing here? You don't think they're just meeting their buddies? Maybe, but... Then why are their buddies here? Prepare for transfer. The storm! It's back! What happened? Hold on. I'm scanning. Tetrametric radiation is dropping. The Zeldi's dropped to minimal power levels. It's running off just the one warp core now. That means... They've sent the Cartabula to that other ship. Something wrong, Captain? No, nothing's wrong. In fact, I was just going to call for you. I'm needed down in engineering. The bridge is yours. Commander Westbrook, a word, please. I'm busy here, so let's make it quick. What's this about? The captain may have been compromised. I have reason to believe he's been bioformed and is now actively working against us. Come on. You can't be serious. Someone is sabotaging the mission. They planted a Taconian device in engineering. Captain Solano was in engineering while we were on Delphi Ardu 4, and he purposely evaded Dr. Duval's bioscan. That's ridiculous. I just spoke with him a few minutes ago. He was as normal as ever. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. You don't understand. This is not a joke. I'm absolutely serious. If Captain Solano is a scion, it means he purposely evaded the bioscan to avoid detection. I'm sure he had more important things to do. You've rarely put your trust in me before. Which, ironically, only makes your story more believable. You're clearly not looking for whoever is most likely to go along with you. If you go through with this, and you're right about Solano, 
You'll be the new captain of the Resolute. With your support, I think I can manage it. I'll have your back. But you damn well better be right. Now or never. Captain Solano. Commander Rydeck, we need to talk about... Doctor? What brings you to the bridge? Just a bit of housekeeping. You owe me a bioscan, Captain. I don't have time for that right now. It will only take a moment. I can't put this off any longer. You can, and you will. All you'll find is that I'm quite reasonably under stress, given the circumstances, and you aren't making it better. I'll find you in sickbay when I'm good and ready. Or, if you're gonna stand in the way of the mission, I can find you in the brig instead. It's merely protocol, Captain. All officers that touch alien soil have to be bioscanned. I know the protocol. It's not more important than chasing down these Taconian marauders. The crew looks to you for guidance, Captain. It may seem like a nuisance, but it would set the right example. What is this? We need you to comply with the scan, Captain. That's enough. Drop this. All of you. I'm giving you a direct order, Commander Rydeck. Stand down and go back to your post. Now. Do not make me tell you again. I've been a starship captain since before you were in the Academy. I won't stand for this. I'd follow that order, if you were actually Captain Solano. Well then, there's only one thing left to do. Security to the bridge. Arrest Commander Rydeck. Take her to the brig. On what charge? Conspiring with the enemy and mutiny. Captain, please reconsider. I've given my order. This is not Captain Solano. He's been bioformed. He's a scion. You're out of your mind. Commander Rydek has proof. He sabotaged our efforts to track Galvin with this. He planted it in engineering while we were down on Delphi Ardu 4. Lies! Perpetrated by the only Takan in our midst, Portal 6-3. He's actively trying to divide us from within. Captain Solano has refused to be bioscanned because he knows it will reveal he's a scion. Take her to the brig or I'll do it myself. Wait, stand down. That's an order. What is the meaning of this? Everyone hold until we get answers. This cannot happen on the bridge of a Federation starship. I can prove I'm right if you just give me a chance. If I'm wrong, then I will face the consequences. If you're wrong, there's no coming back from this. I'm going to settle this once and for all. Commander Rydick was right. Captain Solano has been compromised. He's been bioformed into a Takan.
as the chief medical officer of the USS Resolute. I am relieving Captain Zachary Solano of command. Take him to the brig. I don't know what to say. I'm stunned. We all are. Well, there's no going back now. You are, rightfully, the captain of the Resolute. And I'm with you from here on out. I need you to know that. I've always wanted to be captain of my own ship, but I never imagined it would happen this way. I don't think anyone could anticipate something like this, but you learn from one of the best. And you'll be one of the best. I know it. Set course for the Usonia system. Maximum warp. It's time to face Galvin. Yes, Commander. Sorry. Captain. On your command. Engage. but with the algorithms compromised, they may not do much. Captain, that other Elidian ship is here. The Zeldi? We're outnumbered. Captain, your orders. Evasive maneuvers. Aye, Captain. The Veskar's warp engines are powering up. engines are offline. That must have been their goal. They didn't want us to chase the Veskar. According to my readings, they also took the Cartabula with them. They're not breaking off. We have to destroy the Zeldi before it destroys us. With Diaz and Edsalar still over there? They'll need to evacuate. <sighs> Come on. I almost have it. They gotta know we're here. Hurry! You got it? Got it! Diaz to Resolute! We read you, Diaz. This is Ermot. It's good to hear your voice. Is Ed Salar? Is she with you? Everyone wants to know. Yeah, we're both here. We're both okay. Very good, Petty Officer. Can we get us out of here? can't transport you out while the Zeldi's shields are up. Our phaser fire won't even get through. Is there another way off that ship? We'll find a way. Whatever you do, you'll have to be quick about it. Because we can't give you much more time. We can't evade the Zeldi forever. Understood. Diaz out. We're gonna have to get out of here the old-fashioned way. The Lydian ships have no escape pods. We can leave out that cargo bay we transported to before. But then there's the vacuum of space to contend with. Those freight containers. Maybe we could use those to make an escape pod? Is that even possible? 
We're gonna make it possible. Unless you have a better idea. Let's go. I've polarized the hull plating. That should allow us to take a few more hits. Enemy phaser impact dissipated. Heading, Captain? Attack pattern Beta-3. Circle around that asteroid and come back firing. Aye, Captain. Zeldi, in range. Fire! Zeldi shields down to 82%. We're doing damage, but they're hitting us right back. We'll run out of hull before we penetrate their shields. Perhaps I can be of assistance. I can modify your impulse engines to amplify their meager output and avoid more of their attacks. But I will need full access to your propulsion systems. That goes against dozens of Starfleet regulations. It's not a security risk if the alternative is destruction. To me, it's simple. You can take this beat and hope you can weather it. Or will you put your trust in me? I've left everything behind for you. The least you can do is put your faith in me. Commander Ermot, give Bortle access to the propulsion systems. You're going to have the ship in your hands. Don't let me down. This will take a moment. ship has let up its fire. That gives us some time. All right. One of these freight containers should do the trick. Be quick. We need one big enough for all of us to fit inside. Something we can make airtight. Not enough room for the big guy. Damn it. Not this one. No way this will hold up in a vacuum. Here we go. Here we go. This will work. That's great, but it's not airtight yet. No problem. We'll just seal it up. This container is extremely heavy. Even with the containment field open, it won't leave the bay quickly. I'll find something to accelerate our exit. and glow. Very little damage. I cannot keep this up for long. Their phaser banks are recharging. Now's our window. We have to strike back. I agree. Their next barrage could be our last. Better make this count. Target their weapon systems. Take the teeth out of their bite. That could make them run. Just like the Veskar, we'd lose Diaz and Edsilar again. Hit their engines. We've already lost the Veskar. We need to protect ourselves first. Target their propulsion systems. I don't want them going anywhere. Targeting their engines. Whoa. We gotta move it now. These will give us the push we need. Those are... explosives. We'll ride the blast right out of here. All set. I'll set the containment field to deactivate, and then run back. We can detonate by remote. We'll need to seal the doors from inside the container once we do. Before all the air sucks out of the cargo bay. moment. 
out. Hurry! What are they doing in there? Lord of Resolute. I have the away team. Go ahead. We're about to exit. We see the cargo bay containment field is deactivated. Get that tractor beam ready. And you should know, the Zeldi is set to self-destruct. If we do enough damage to the Zeldi first, it'll prevent the self-destruct sequence from completing. We can't wait any longer. We have to fire. Captain, they're almost out of there. We need to act fast. Prepare all torpedo banks. Aye, Captain. Locked on and ready to fire. Fire! Tractor beam's locked on. We have them. They'll be pulled into the docking bay shortly. There's something else. I tracked a transporter signal to the planetoid moments before the Zeldi detonated. Sidron. There's a Takan structure there. It's the reason they were here. It's the reason we are here. Now. I have to see it for myself. We'll go there together. I had assumed as much. Is this the Takan arsenal Galvin was after? Legend says this region once held the sacred mysteries of the Takan Empire. Our greatest treasure. Our most fearsome technology. I want a full security detail. Westbrook, Bredrosian, you're with me. Mr. Ermont, you have the con. Wait. <clears throat> you're not the first officer anymore. The captain is supposed to stay with the ship. I'm surprised Lieutenant Bedrosian didn't raise that first. I thought Captain Rydeck knew what she was doing. That's the protocol. 
but it's also a captain's prerogative to break that protocol. I suppose it is. We'll deal with the first officer vacancy when we return. Until then, Mr. Ermont? Yes, Captain. Any sign of Sidron? Not that I can see. High alert, everyone. The enemy could be anywhere. Follow my lead. Let's make this a short mission, all right? That's the plan. Well, it's your call to come down here. Still not sure I agree. I respect the chain of command. Another to Khan Vault. I don't see a way in. The vault in the mines was already open. There must be some way to activate it. Portal, can you open it? It is a Taconian vault. I thought you'd never ask. You're welcome. Better to keep it simple. Thank you. Definitely easier this way. Spread out. Let's see what we can find and stay on high alert. We don't know where the Takan that beamed down here could be. You will need my help, Commander. How so? Traversal here is trivial for a Takan, but only a Takan. When you come across a device you cannot use, merely call my name. Will do. Thank you. This pattern resembles the transporter device Petty Officer Maris used to escape the Resolute. Portal 6-3? You wish to make use of this device? It's a transporter of some kind? It allows Tacon to move through space instantly a short distance. Very convenient. I will activate the system for you.
where does it go? I'm not sure. The markings here must be from after my time. Well, only one way to find out. Soil. Just... Soil. It's not from this planet, nor any planet in the Federation database. Why is this here? This is soil from the homeworld. Our capital system. This isn't an arsenal. It's a temple of the ancients. Sacred ground to the Dakon. I took my oath as a guardian of the Empire in a place just like this. I cannot imagine the look of pride in my parents' eyes as they said goodbye forever. Sorry. 
This is the first I've seen of anything new from the Takon Empire in a very long time. I'm sure you're familiar with the feeling, that sense of loss. I thought I was ready for it. I totally understand that feeling. It's unavoidable and inescapable, no matter what you do. Yes, it's that distant but familiar feeling that's forever just out of reach. Can you use this to find out more about what Galvin is after? The information's encrypted. I can only discern that it's a warship. No. It's the Aphelion. Perhaps the most Motoconian ship ever built. I can't access the full file, but looking through the ship's schematics, it appears to be equipped with some sort of experimental, highly advanced transporter technology. Transporter technology? For what? Captain, you better come see this. of it I'd say someone left in a hurry probably right around the time we showed up seen these before in the other vault and if all of those are the same as this then there must be hundreds of millions if not billions all that remains of the Dakon civilization A distinct person encapsulated in crystalline form preserved for all eternity I doubt Galvin would willingly leave these behind, so odds are he'll be back. Unless this is why he sent Sidron here. What you have to understand is, these life forms were preserved for the benefit of the Takan civilization, as a means of safeguarding the health and well-being of any Takan, should they fall prey to illness or injury. They were never intended to be used for this purpose. There, you are wrong. This was always their purpose. To restore the glory that was lost. Please. Congratulations on your first victory in battle. Captain Rydek. You killed a great many of my compatriots, some that I've known for millennia. Are you proud of how much death you've caused? Each Takan life is precious, irreplaceable, centuries of knowledge and culture lost with each one you murder. I was protecting my crew. It's regrettable to take any life. But when someone threatens galactic civilization, force is the correct response. And I suppose it worked. For now. Thankfully, I don't have to convince you of anything. We'll all be on the same side soon enough. You can't just bioform whoever you want. Not without a fight. Ah, but that's just it. There won't be a fight. In fact, 
Most won't even know what's happened. One minute you're standing there as you. The next you're standing here as one of us. He's talking about mass transformation. That's what the Aphelion was built for. The transporter. It'll reconstitute your DNA and bioform you into a Takan in the blink of an eye. This is what they'll use as ammunition. In a manner of speaking, yes. Of course, that's the simple version. But the end result will be the same. Your time has passed. The Takan Empire is gone. Only to be reborn better and stronger than it ever was. The Aphelion is on its way here as we speak. Now it's only a matter of time. You can't delay that which is inevitable. Which makes your next decision fairly simple, brother. You are, after all, a portal. I am. Your sole purpose is to serve as a guardian of the Takan Empire. But you stand here surrounded not by your fellow Takan, but by members of the Federation. By people who deny our fundamental right to exist. You swore an oath to protect the Empire. And I can only assume that's why you're here. There is only one true Takan here, and that's Portal. You're a scion, a disgrace to the memory of the Takan, brought back through unnatural means. I only tolerate your presence so long as you continue to amuse me. Which side are you on? Captain Rydak, long-range sensors suggest a massive spacecraft approaching in the distance. The time has come. I hope we speak again, brother. Estimated time to contact, six minutes and counting. We can't stay here. We have to get back to the ship. And we have to preserve these souls. We must take them back to your ship. Those crystals are ammunition to be used against us. We have to destroy them. Bombard the site from orbit. I'll decide, once we're safely aboard the Resolute. For to transport. You have to hear me out, Captain. I lost my eyes because of you. And still, I've always stood by you. But if you bring those... things on board, I'll have no choice but to resign. If they're taken to the Aphelion, they will be forced into new bodies, brought back to life in a way they never asked for. They're not living beings, but they're still dangerous. And if you don't make decisions to protect us, we're gonna end up like Solano. You, me, the entire crew. We're all next. Two minutes and counting. It's headed straight toward the vault. The Aphelion is coming into view now, Captain. On screen. Second vault in less than a minute. I would remind you, those life forms are to come. Not science, to come. They're not your enemy. Right or wrong, history will judge you for this moment.
transport the storage crystals aboard the Resolute. Did I hear that right? That's an order. The storage crystals are on board in our cargo bay. Thank you. I won't forget this. I hope you realize what you've done. We don't need another captain who's gonna risk our lives just to feed their ego. This ship and this crew come first. Lieutenant. She has to hear it. This isn't about me. It's our duty as Starfleet officers to protect life, wherever and however we find it. And I couldn't let them fall into Galvin and Sidron's hands. I had to do it this way. And to think... I used to look up to you. The Aphelion is targeting us, approaching rapidly. They hit us with that bioforming ray, and it's over. Maximum warp, get us out of here. Where, Captain? Anywhere but here. Now! Thank you. I'm not sure one of my kind would have done for you what you did for me. I did not expect a show of mercy. I hoped, but you could have just as easily left me to my fate. See, that's... that's just one of the differences between Starfleet and you. Scions of the Flame. Our mission is to help when we can, even if that means helping our enemies. There is honor in that. Now that we're safe on your ship, I think you were right to bring her. Things seem a little different now than they did in the heat of battle. There's more than one way to deal with messy situations. You're not mad that I didn't release Atasca from her situation? After all the trials we'd survived, maybe there's more room to hope for Atasca than I thought. Surprises here. But your shoulders separated. If you come with me to Sick Bay, we can get you fixed up in no time. Uh thank you. I'll find you afterwards. You two, check in at your stations. This thing isn't over yet. Tell me, did any crew from the Zelti survive? Well, since the Lydian ships have no escape pods, I think it was just us. I see. I thought so. I had a partner on board. After this mission, she and I were meant to... Does it matter? All that matters now is making the Takan pay for what they've done. We'll stop them. I promise. She was a good little escape pod. Not that I want another ride like that anytime soon.
You're really making us proud out there, Diaz. The lower decks don't get a lot of glory. I'm just getting started. Hey, Diaz. Yeah? Did you see our people over there? Miranda? Kapoor? Hauser? We saw Miranda and Kapoor, but they're bioformed. And as far as I know, there's no way to undo it. That means they're not our friends anymore. If they attack us... We'll have to stop them. No matter what it takes. Yeah. I, I guess we have to be ready for that. I can't believe it, but I'm actually looking forward to seeing Chobok. Not that I'd expect this kind of welcome from him. But I can just imagine the look on his face. Oh, come on, he's gotta give us some credit for all we've done. We'll see. Then again, if he doesn't, that's just Chovak being Chovak. I can't believe it! You evaded the Takan, ejected their warp cores, and lived to talk about it! That about sums it up. They're gonna be teaching this at the Academy for years to come. I mean it. Everybody's gonna learn how you pulled it off. Well, what we did, you can't just teach that. <laughs> Maybe not, but I'm sure they'll try. I heard about Belle. Is Miranda? As far as we know, she's still out there. Well, I know Captain Rydek will do her best to get her back. Hold on. Rydek? What about Captain Solano? He was turned into a Takan. Rydek had to take over. She's a hell of an officer. But none of us have been up against anything like this. No one has. Not in half a million years. I guess there's never a dull moment around here, huh? You're telling me it's not always like this? Not if we can help it. <clears throat> Talk to you later. It is agreeable to see you again. Is that so? It was by no means a certainty that you would return to duty here. It is agreeable to see you as well, sir. I concur. You should know your absences left engineering terribly short-handed. During your sojourn, this department has fallen unacceptably behind schedule on both regular and irregular duties. There's been a whole lot of irregularity going around. I gotta admit, it's a little flattering that this place went to hell so fast without me. So, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. I believe factors other than your absence were also to blame. Normally, I would assign you to one of the many pressing repair tasks. But, given your experience on board the Zeldi, I have suggested you join the senior staff briefing as we determine our next course of action. You can commence your maintenance shift afterwards. I tended to an Illidian earlier. Major Sarlet Arminta? Ah, yes. I met him at the negotiations. I never would have imagined I'd be here, on the same ship, working together with our oppressors. But now that I am, I can imagine a future where the Hotari and Elidians are no longer enemies. I always hoped for peace, but it seems so far away. There's still a lot of bad blood. Peace is often fleeting. If there's a chance, you should take it. Peace with our former enemies may be hard for some to accept. But it's what my people need. Oh, that's coming along nicely. Thank you, Tylus. I'll take it from here. We're almost done. I have to brief Ambassador Spock in a few minutes. Ambassador Spock can wait. You have some fences to mend. 
Personally, I'm against the needless destruction of innocent life forms. So I'm glad you transported the Taconian crystals onto the ship. But Lieutenant Bedrosian obviously feels otherwise. And right now, you need the full support of your bridge crew. Being an effective leader requires trust. But an issue as divisive as this can create discord. I don't expect everyone will agree with my decisions. And she's entitled to a different opinion. But I'll handle Lieutenant Bedrosian. You'll be fine. Just as long as people feel like they're being heard. It's been a chaotic last few days for everyone. You need to name a new first officer in preparation for what's coming. You'll have to work to regain Lieutenant Bedrosian's trust, but if she's removed from consideration, it comes down to Westbrook or Ermot. Obviously, there are pros and cons with each, but ultimately, the decision is yours. Commander Westbrook has seniority and was hoping to be Captain Solano's first officer. Ermot has the knowledge and experience that makes him more than qualified. You really couldn't go wrong with either of them. At the moment, I am leaning toward selecting Commander Westbrook as the new first officer. That would be an excellent choice, considering your history. The crew would respect the fact you chose someone likely to challenge your opinions and present a different point of view. You're as good as new. Thank you, Dr. Duvall. Always nice to have a captive audience. You really shouldn't keep Ambassador Spock waiting. Captain. I'll meet you inside. I'm here to officially tender my resignation from the crew of the USS Resolute. I cannot in good conscience continue to serve aboard this ship. Not while the interests of the enemy take precedent over the safety of the crew. Lieutenant, we both know how much we need your help and expertise for the coming conflict. I have no one to replace you. I understand, Captain. And I apologize, but my heart is not in it any longer, and to stay would be a disservice to us both. My door is always open if you change your mind. I appreciate that. We'll have Ambassador Spock via subspace shortly. Thank you, Mr. Armand. I'll notify Lieutenant Bedrosian we're about to begin. That won't be necessary. Petty officers Diaz and Edsalar have first-hand experience with our adversaries. I thought it advantageous for them to join this briefing. I understand this is unusual. But I trust you have no objections? Talk about moving up in the world. I'll allow it, Mr. Chobak. In all seriousness, what Diaz and Edsalar accomplished aboard the Zeldi is nothing short of remarkable. They're both to be commended, not only for surviving against incredible odds, but for helping our efforts against these Scions. You know, Carter deserves most of the credit. None of us would have made it without his help. We'd all be bioformed by this point. There were way more people involved than just me. Not only Petty Officer Edsalar, but we had help from an Elidian officer named Arminta as well. Interesting. Ambassador Spock is ready for you. Put him through. Captain Rindek, your recent change in station certainly warrants mention, and I trust you to faithfully execute your expanded duties. Right now, we must keep our attention on the clear and present danger that lies ahead, the Takan and their warship. The closest populations are the Hotari and Elidian systems, and they are likely the first targets for mass bioforming. After that lies Federation space. I have advised Starfleet Command to send an impromptu battle group to intercept and assist you, but that will take time. You are our first line of defense. And with our shield algorithms compromised, we are at a great disadvantage. I'm glad to hear the battle group is en route, Ambassador. With what we're up against, we're gonna need all the help we can get. And you will have it. Remember, our strength is drawn from our ability to work together towards a common goal. Have we made any progress in finding a way to defend ourselves from the Aphelion's bioforming weapon? 
Currently, our shields will not protect us, but I am compiling all of the information the away team gathered on the Zeldi and cross-referencing it against our own as well as Portal 6-3's methods. The away team is sitting right here. They survived without getting bioformed, so we know it's possible. So, what's the secret? How do we defend ourselves? Is there a weakness we can exploit? Something we can do to avoid getting bioformed? Well, there are no secrets. It's a serious threat. And we're vulnerable. The whole ship is. We saw someone getting bioformed. Once it starts, there's nothing you can do. Huh. <sighs> Can't stop it, but might be able to slow it down. It's too soon to say for sure, but we've had some promising indications that Deridium can delay the bioforming process. Deridium? It's not a cure. It's not going to bring anyone back we've already lost. But Deridium is a cell stabilizer, so it has the potential to slow down the onset of physical and mental changes, if not entirely prevent them. And might be the only ship in the fleet with this much Deridium on hand. In fact, a lot of ships wouldn't have any. You say that it slows the process, but this doesn't actually stop the Takan from taking over, does it? Correct. I can't be 100% certain, but it appears this is only a short-term solution. Also, it requires a much larger dose to be effective. We don't have enough Deridium on board to protect the whole crew. We barely have enough to protect everyone in this room. Sounds like it won't do us much good, then. The use case I'd suggest is that it could buy a little time for an officer or a small group to complete a task or mission. But it has to be taken at the moment of exposure to the bioforming mechanism. Prepare a delivery method for this... remedy. That raises the question. What is the mission? Assuming the Aphelion uses shields of some kind, I don't expect it will be easy to bypass their defenses. We may not be able to block the Aphelion's attack either. But if they do strike, we know their weapon uses transporter technology. We might be able to backtrack their signal path. Like we did to evacuate Captain Rydek from Tau. Exactly. We could send an away team onto the Aphelion. So we could destroy it from the inside. I'm not exactly sure how, but... I think Portal could still help us. If he can't get a first-hand look at the Aphelion, he might be able to identify a weakness. After sparing the remnants of his civilization, I should hope he'd help us. He will. We'll need to prepare a boarding party, if it comes to that. Petty Officers Edsilar and Diaz are the logical choices to lead any away mission to the Aphelion. They have already crippled one enemy ship. If anyone can do so again, it is them. This isn't like the engineering mission that took you to the Zeldi. Do you really have some special insights that a tactical team wouldn't? Doesn't the fact that we're here speak for itself? Just surviving won't be enough this time. Sabotage is kind of becoming our specialty. We'll find a way to get the job done. Well, he certainly has the swagger for it. If this is the necessary course of action, I support it. With the help of Portal, he should be part of the away team. I will compile all the latest data on the tricorders, just in case. In the meantime, I want you working on ways we can combat the Takan tech. Shields, weapons, anything we can use. Yes, Captain. Anything else, Ambassador? I know this matter is in capable hands. Hold the line as best you can. Help is on the way. Thank you. I have faith in all of you to meet this moment with the urgency it requires. I expect all of us to give it everything we've got. Thank you, Petty Officers Diaz and Edsilar. You're dismissed. While we have a quorum of senior staff, there is a procedural element we need to take care of. The Resolute Command Codes must be transferred to Captain Rydek. For control of the ship. Of course. Computer, 
Transfer all command codes to Captain Jara Rydek. Voice authorization Ermot, Echo 4 Lima. Voice authorization Duval, Beta 2 Yankee. Voice authorization Westbrook, Alpha 7 Tango. Awaiting your authorization, Captain. Voice authorization, Rydek, Alpha, Seven, Whiskey. Captain's codes transferred. The updated command structure is incomplete. Please designate a new first officer. Who is the new first officer? Please designate a new first officer. I am proud to name Commander Ermot as my new first officer, effective immediately. Congratulations. Thank you, Captain. I promise I won't let you down. Computer, Commander Ermot is the new first officer of the USS Resolute. Awaiting voice authorization. Voice authorization, Ermot, Echo 4 Lima. Authorization is now complete. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Nicely done. I think that went well. Captain Rydek! Excuse me for a minute. This... this is just... unbelievable! Unacceptable! Inexplicable! To be the most senior officer on the bridge, and to be passed over again?! I thought we'd turned a corner when you trusted me with the information about Captain Solano being compromised. Boy, was I wrong. And now this? I know how you must feel given your seniority and history aboard this ship. You have every right to be angry, but I had to factor what would best serve our interests at this particular point in time. Which is why I chose Commander Ermot. He's not even close to being first officer material. He's little more than a bureaucrat who's never set foot off the ship. That is a serious liability at a time when we need experience. Otherwise, we don't stand a chance against the Scions. You're entitled to your opinion. But I completely disagree with your assessment. Commander Ermont is an extremely competent professional who's more than up to the task. And he'll be an excellent first officer. You drove Petrosian away? Now this? If you're not careful, you might not have any crew left, even if we do survive. But we will survive. Ridiculous. Understand. Kimmy got everything she's got, but it doesn't make a difference. Something is actively slowing us down. Keep trying. What's the situation in engineering? I can't raise them. Internal comms are down. It's the ionic interference. It's spiking again. If we reinitialize the central communications trunk, it should compensate. I know the process, Captain. With your permission, I'll go handle it. Of course. If Galvin manages to catch us, there's nothing we can do. We're no match for Taconian technology. Not to mention the shield frequencies. As if that wasn't enough of a challenge of its own. I'll consider any suggestions from my first officer. bearing down on our position. We're being hailed by the Aphelion. Galvin demands to be heard. On screen. You thought you could run. That I would let you escape so easily after taking what's mine? How pathetic. 
and predictable. At least you can take solace knowing you'll be a far braver to calm than you were as a cowardly Kobliad. Is it any wonder your people perished? If your every instinct is to run from a fight? You can threaten us all you want, but Starfleet is already on their way. And you'll have more to contend with than just us. Then you've done me a favor. We both know I hold your fate in the palm of my hand. That I could crush you in an instant if I so desired. And as much as I'd like to, you have another purpose to serve. As one of us. They've hit us, decks 8 through 10. But I'm not reading any structural damage. They were targeting the crew, not the ship. Captain, we have to respond with force. Return fire. Don't let them attack without a counter. Fire phasers. Target the source of the beam. No damage from the phasers, Captain. Their shields are still at full strength. The Aphelion's just too powerful. Damage report from the lower decks. Still can't get through on the comms, Captain. If that was the bioforming ray to assume there are now Takan on board the Resolute. They could all be Takan at this point. Or will be soon enough. Where's Westbrook with the internal comms? The communication system seems to be rebooting, but I'll keep trying to raise Westbrook. Good. Here are your new tricorders. Now go. Get to the transporter room.
transport to room one. You're coming with us? A security officer told me your funeral, which I gladly accepted. These are concentrated duridium doses. You need to take the dose as soon as you're exposed for it to be effective. Hell, take it right before if you can get the Takan to wait while you do it. I'm having trouble locking onto the transporter path through the interference. I've done this before. I have to align the transporter with the tetrametric signature. We need to tunnel through the shields. to make the jump. I might be able to divert power from Stand the... aside. The signal is now resolved. I couldn't let you fumble about any longer. That's great. You must be Portal 6-3. Yes. Guardian of the Takan Empire. I'm Carter. Uh, engineer of the Starship Resolute. We're right behind you. Do us proud over there. Ready to transport. Energize. It's almost a shame we have to scuttle it. The galaxy has never seen a ship like this. It is beautiful. I'll give you that. Resolute, come in! We're losing cohesion. I'm gonna try to use my tricorder as a pattern enhancer. They didn't make it. We don't have time to mourn. We have to get to the Cartabula and disable it. Hopefully before the battle group shows up. It's served up for the Aphelion's next meal. I am... saturated in Taconian power readings. I... can't feel the source just yet. This way. Nothing. I can't reach anyone on the lower decks. Internal comms appear to be fully operational again. 
That bioforming ray may have transformed dozens of crew members on the lower decks. Fighting the Aphelion is bad enough. The last thing we need is an insurrection on our own ship. Which means we have a narrow window of time to cut them off before... spread throughout the decks. We'll never know who to trust. Lock down the affected areas immediately. Close the bulkheads and erect the containment fields. No one is allowed in or out without my authorization. There could be crew members who weren't affected who could get locked inside. That's a risk we'll have to take. Locking down the lower decks. What happens if some of the bioforms manage to escape? How should the crew engage them? Or should they? We don't want suspicion to run rampant. We should be cautious. If a situation arises, I want phasers set to stun. Of course. I'll let the crew know to proceed with caution. Commander Westbrook has been gone for quite some time. The comm system he went to investigate. It's near the affected area. Commander Westbrook? Commander Westbrook, are you there? Computer shutdown initiated. Westbrook. He's the one who initiated the shutdown. That's impossible. We have ten minutes until the computer core shuts down and all systems are completely offline. A complete loss of all critical ship functions. Only the captain can override it. But the computer core itself... With me. trying to figure out what's happening. Ah, to hell with it. Master Console is up there. I don't have much time. Captain, are you in here? Are you all right? Vermont asked me to come find you. I came the minute I heard you might be in danger. I'll get this door open. I think I remember the code. Hope you haven't been hurt, Captain. It's not safe here. Chaos in the halls. Just about... Tell me, where were you when the bioforming ray hit the ship? I was... Well, I was in the turbo lift. Now just stay still. These Federation weapons are so primitive. Computer termination sequence in progress. Damn it!
delaying the inevitable. Computer termination sequence in progress, awaiting captain's authorization. Shut down. everything you believe in. Besides, you and I, we have history. Westbrook and I have history. You're not him. Awaiting captain's authorization. Awaiting captain's authorization. Cancel computer shutdown. Voice authorization, Rydek. Alpha, seven, whiskey. Termination sequence canceled. <sighs> These are the arteries of power coming from the Cotabula at the heart of the Aphelion. I can feel it coursing through my own body. Look there. I cannot move as freely inside this ship. Those emitters are why. If they were deactivated, I could travel past this chamber without setting foot in it. Only Takan can use Takan technology. How do I turn them off? Place these on the emitters. It will suppress their effect. The guards none the wiser. Got it. I'm coming too. If we both get caught, it's over. If it's just me, you can try again after I fail. Well then, don't screw it up. or any of the guards. It'll alert every Takan in here. Almost got it.
Those guards can see the whole room from there. How am I gonna get past them? Maybe the Crystal's portal gaming will get a reaction out of these consoles. It worked! Better move. to bioform. We do not need this pathetic religion.
one left. Is someone there? Get out of here. More emitters. Guess we can't teleport the rest of the way. That craft can take us to the main power chamber. No way we can make that jump. When I was younger, maybe. Huh. This might control that craft. Portal, a little help? I should be able to bring it to us.
got this thing set to maximum stun. How are they getting up? Something's different about the Takan here. Stunning isn't an option. Get in! would go faster if you did something about them. Fool. to our ancestors. How do you stand with them? We've left them behind. I've seen it with my own eyes. They're not real to come. We were conquerors, not Parasites. The souls I pushed your captain to spare will not be used for this end. I'll tell you what these scions are. They're fanatics. They won't stop for anything. Yes. So, we must be fanatical in return if we are going to stop them. No hesitation. This ends here. Shaker! I figured without me you didn't stand a chance. I'm here for the ship and the crew, not for you. I couldn't just sit in my quarters, waiting to get turned into a Takan. I don't care how you feel about me. Just do your job. Fair enough. They're targeting our engines. With Bioform Takan on board, they'd rather cripple us if they can. If we lose the engines, we can't avoid the Bioforming Ray. Brace for impact! Put them through. Sorry to keep you waiting, Resolute. We got here as fast as we could. Looks like you've got your hands full with this monster. We're damn glad to see you, Captain. We could use all the help we can get. I told you I'd be here. So, what are we up against? They're powering up for another attack. We have to warn them. 
Open a channel to all Starfleet ships immediately. Starting emergency transmission. This is Captain Jara Rydek of the USS Resolute. The ship we're fighting is armed with a bioforming ray that can transform your entire crew instantaneously. Avoid being hit at all costs. And remember, they have our shield algorithms, so take preemptive evasive action. It's only a matter of time before they get their bearings. And when they do, they're going to turn against us. The sooner we attack them, the better. They can all be Dakar. Or none of them. We can't assume anything yet. You're right. We can't just wait for them to attack us. Fire on the Pawtucket! That's not a Starfleet ship. The Takan have it. Shields at full power! Shields are holding against the Pawtucket's attack. For now, at least. Fire photon torpedoes! Firing! Damage reported in astrometrics. Handar, evasive maneuvers. Get us out of here. Aye, Captain. Don't worry, Resolute. We've got your back. Their weapon systems are offline. Captain, I suggest we minimize the collateral damage. Destroy their engines and we can turn our focus to the Aphelion. It's the most prudent thing to do. And I hope they would do the same if the situation was reversed. Take out their engines. Fire when ready. Targeting their engines. Commencing fire. Now. one of us to take on alone but collectively we might just have a shot on our way full impulse power i captain target their engines fire photon torpedoes firing photon torpedoes Helm control. Trying to re-establish. Weapons and defensive systems are down too. Engine output remains consistent, but it's not reaching its destination. This is what happened to the Enterprise. They're draining our energy. We're caught in it too. I hope the away team finds some way to help. a way to disable the Aphelion, it's there. We strike at the heart. The Cotabula. I can feel the energy. 
Don't get too used to it. We're gonna take that thing down. Turn off this energy field to enter. I must do it. It requires the hands of a Takon. Is it working? It started. Is the opening wide enough to get through? Well, is it wide enough? No, but I can see the cartabula. What about now? Still can't get in. Stand back. I'll try again. much wider. Can we get through? Maybe. Maybe we can widen it with a containment field from the tricorder. Oh! I don't think we can crowbar our way in. It takes a con to do it. Carter, 
I could have killed you both. Easily. But the part of me that is still Miranda won't let me. She compels me to bring you into the fold. I will make you one of us. <laughs> Miranda was gone long ago. It's a con. It won't work. It's the only way. I'll do it. We don't have time to stand around to try to figure another way. Everyone's counting on us. Sometimes, you gotta take a shortcut. If you're sure about this, I'm sure. You don't know how this thing works, and I don't want it to get you by accident. So you give me the Duridium, and then I'll do the deed. 
Okay. Just don't let me back out. I don't think I've ever been this scared. I just gotta... take the leap. Listen, I don't let you do anything. You're in charge of what you do. Always have been. I always tried, at least. Even if I don't remember who I am, don't you forget me. Millie. Millie, talk to me. <laughs> I'm... I'm here, Carter. But I don't know for how long. It's not working. Could the Deridium be too strong? Don't tell me I did this for nothing. <sighs> I can read this. Stop it, stop it, stop it! Someone's talking in my head. I'm all right. It's nothing. It comes and goes. You can do this, Nelly. I know you can. Yeah, as long as my new best friend stays out of the way. We've reached the Cartabula. Very good. Are you all right? Yeah, we're inside. Two of ours are keeping the Bioform ships at bay, but they can't hold them off forever. I'm receiving tricorder transmissions from the away team. Picking up our warp core resonant frequency within the Ophelion. They're bleeding us dry. But they're not just taking our power, they're routing it through the Cartabula. This is the Resolute's warp core resonant frequency. Not sure about these others, though. I'll scan the power readings for a match. I'll try to isolate them for you. 
That frequency matches the Titan's warp core resonance. And these two are the Kimball and the Lowell. They're both Steamrunner class. Same engine platform. They're tuned just a little differently. <sighs> I wish I didn't, but I think I understand this readout. This warning means the Cartabula is struggling with the power stacked up at such close resonant frequencies. It can't handle the dissonance. Ratu away team, are you reading these Starfleet engine signatures? We are. And you need to see this. The Steam Runner class frequencies are causing problems for the Aphelion's energy source. Sending visuals now. They're vulnerable. We have to use this. Captain. If they want to take all of our power, I suggest we give it to them. How? If we, and the other Starfleet ships, work together and send maximum warp output tuned to those same frequencies, it could overload their core. There is merit to the theory. But if we attempt this, it would preclude any other course of action. I wouldn't risk this ship without good reason. If this is going to succeed, we'll need all Starfleet ships to pitch in. We aren't alone anymore. We need to leverage that. I will create a high-energy static warp shell. We'll need the away team to guide us to the right frequency. We read you, Resolute. You're putting a lot of faith in us, Captain. That's a hell of a plan. We don't want to let you down. You just do your part over there. We'll do ours here. And we'll get through this together. Yes, Captain. If our plan works, it looks like it will trigger an ejection routine. Yeah, but they're going to have to overload the Cartabula right up to the edge of destruction. We are increasing the warp core resonant frequency now. I'm scared, Carter. I don't want this transformation to go all the way. I can't let that happen. I won't live like that. I'll make sure that the Dakon doesn't finish taking over. You know what that means, right? I do. Good. Is something wrong? No, no, we're, we're fine. Do you see our output frequency changing? We do. What is the impact on the Aphelion systems? Hold on, I... Hold on, I can do better than this. I know it. Now that this plan's in action, I have more to work with. Inertial dampeners are failing! Power still being drained to the Aphelion, so that part of the plan is working. Now we need the others to join us. Open a channel to anyone left on our side. Opening a channel. This is the Resolute. We're sending instructions to all ships to output maximum warp power at the designated frequency. We believe this will disable the Aphelion. We don't know that. All we know is it'll siphon off our energy much quicker. You're leading us to disaster. Are you out of your mind? That has given them exactly what they want. You can't just expect us to turn belly up. Our strength in Starfleet comes from our ability to work together, especially when everything is on the line. I can get behind that, Captain Ryder. We're adjusting the Titan's warp output to match the Resolutes. I suggest the rest of you do the same. Others are joining us. This is the Takahashi. Adjusting our engines now. Damn it. It's 
trying to compensate. But some of these other frequencies are causing spikes too. We need to find a new target range for the Resolute. Okay. I'm gonna process these frequencies. Here it is. If they all converge on this frequency, it'll provide maximum disruption to the Cartabian. Ready to send. We want to overload this thing, push it to the brink, but not past it. You sure about this frequency? If we go too far, we won't just be destroying the Cartabula. We're going to take a lot more with us. I'm just doing what I always do. I'm an engineer, following the data. Good enough for me. Sending data to the Resolute. Updated telemetry coming from the away team. We have a new target range. Sending new parameters to engineering. We are now running our core at 105% of recommended capacity. If we try to meet that frequency, we will generate a harmonic imbalance of our own and risk a warp core breach. I must warn you, these are precisely the engine conditions that Captain Solano's experiment brought about. A runaway reaction is a dangerous possibility right now. Is my order beyond your ability to execute? Then you will follow it. We're all counting on you. Yes, Captain. We got an overload here. It's at the breaking point. It's not going to eject? We'll have to disengage the Cartabula manually. We lit this fuse. We've got to make sure it doesn't go off the wrong way. Those levers will do it, if we can pull hard enough. Power restored. And the Aphelion is shutting down. Returning warp reactor to nominal output levels. The Takan are running off reserve power now.
I know that sacrifice was the last thing you wanted to do. Someone had to do it. Radiation levels are spiking. It's coming from the Cartabula. You must have damaged it. Didn't get it out before it fractured. It's cracked, but we're still here. We didn't rip a hole in space itself. So, not the worst that could have happened. <coughs> That's great, but it's still a problem. Three to beam back to the Resolute. Our transporters won't cut through the interference. We can't lock on. We can't stay here. We're not getting away in that thing. There. Think you can use that to get us out of here? Yeah, I can work this. Hop on. I can't get us off the ship, but I can get us away from the radiation. Radiation's lower here, but still too high for us to stay on the ship. Okay, next stop, the Resolute. That thing is down, but not out. We'll handle the stolen Federation ships, but you need to get a crippling shot on the Aphelion. A direct hit to its bridge will bring it down. Take us real close, Captain. Skim the hull of that thing where it can't get a clear shot at us. Or... Or... I can weave us through the battle. And hope we don't get caught in the crossfire. We can't take much more damage. So, you want us to go closer to that thing? Take us along the Aphelion's hull. Get us to the bridge as fast as you can. Aye, Captain. in position for a shot at the bridge. Photon torpedoes armed and ready. <coughs> Break off this attack, or I will be forced to eradicate you. The damaged Cartabula is continuing to release deadly amounts of radiation. Thankfully, it's still contained within the Aphelion. But they have comrades on that ship, both living and waiting to be reborn. We're going to die in here if we... I don't care! will never submit to your federation. We are taking our rightful place as rulers over this galaxy. So much for superior beings. You don't look so superior from here. Uh, I don't have to listen to this. We've crossed the eons to get here. By a salvo! Radiation is spiking here, too. Trying to get a transporter lock. Are you hurt? It's back. The voice. It's in my head. Just stay where you are. I can get it. Come on. There's help waiting on the Resolute. We just gotta get you back. Carter. Starfleet doesn't know how to stop this. I've got the Resolute targeted, but I can't hold on to a signal lock. I... I have to stay behind and manually run its pattern enhancers. I'm, uh, not gonna make it out. But I'm sending you back. If it is the last thing I do. No. I know we're the same rank and all, but I'm... I'm ordering you to come with us. You can't do that, Diaz. We both know this was a one-way ticket for me. Enhancing the pattern. Stop this. 
If you let them take the transporter, we die here. No! Give in to me, and I will keep us safe. We just have to leave them behind. I'm getting you out. The away team has beamed back. We're in position and ready to fire, Captain. Remember when I said you'd be begging us for mercy one day? This is that day. Please, we... Uh, target the ship! Pummel it to space dust! Like we did... Fire. It was worth it. Hey, Carter. Millie? I just wanted to make sure you made it. Time's up for me, but... we got the job done. That's all that matters. Don't miss me too much. But, uh... You should miss me a little. Millie... To me, you matter more than the mission. We'll always be family. Always. All decks secure. We have the bioformed on board, fully contained. The Starfleet ships under Takan control have signaled their surrender. Good work, Captain Reidick. Next time I need some backup, I'll know who to call. I trust you won't have a problem with that. Just say the word and we'll be there. I'm gonna hold you to that. Captain, we're being hailed. It's the Aphelion. On screen. <coughs> uh, the radiation. We... Uh, <laughs> we won't last much longer in here. Please, we surrender. Uh, we need your help. Please, beam us aboard your ship. Captain, I must remind you that when an enemy is surrendered, it is our duty to render aid. You saved the storage crystals. And there are other Takan, the bioformed on Hotari, on this very ship. We wouldn't be wiping them out if we didn't help the ones who tried to destroy us. This is the Starfleet way. This is the fate they've chosen. Leave them where they are. You can't do that. <coughs> we don't have much time. We submit. I don't know what else I can say. This is what separates us from them. The fact that we can make a gesture of peace, even after all our conflict. Set up containment fields in the docking bay and beam the Takan there. Crew of the Aphelion, shut down all systems. Lower your defenses and prepare to be transported. Thank you. Really? 
My first order of business will be to help reestablish the Hotari government and resume peace talks, genuine talks, with the Olydians. And after that? Who knows? I know I don't want to be queen. There's so much good I could do with just a fraction of your medical technology if I could bring it to my people. But I also want to see what else is out there. Maybe there's even a place for me in Starfleet. It would be hard to stay on Hotari forever. Not with all there is to experience, to learn. My devotion to my people doesn't mean I don't want to explore all the galaxy has to offer. You don't have to be the queen to lead your people. In fact, you don't need to have a queen at all. There are many different forms of governance. But one thing I know is that Hotari would be lucky to have you. Thank you. That means a great deal to me. But there are pressing matters we must attend to before any of that. I can't thank you enough for all you've done. I'll see you again. Starfleet has granted me the privilege of conferring this upon you. Though I'm sure Captain Solano would rather have been the one offering this. You have acted dutifully and bravely through trying circumstances. I grant you the official rank of Captain. I believe a great many wonders lie ahead for you, Jara Rydek. There appears to be nothing that can stand in your way. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life. Victory. Peace. These things never come without a cost. For some, it requires putting aside centuries of enmity. For others, it takes facing complicated losses. To Edsalar! How do you say goodbye to someone who isn't really gone? I know that my friend Nilly would have wanted us to remember her. How she was. And for too many, they had to pay the ultimate price. In time, history may forget their sacrifices, but those of us who were there never will. Now, all hands honor the dead. Captain Solano used to say that nothing ever stays the same. Entropy. It's the nature of the universe. As such, the crew of a starship can never stay the same. But while Entropy says that order inevitably gives way to chaos, this crew has only grown stronger. More cohesive and coherent. Bound by our shared struggles. And working together, helping each other, we're able to do more than we'd ever imagined. Some of our differences couldn't be resolved. But perhaps that too can change in time.
Engage. Space, the final frontier. As we take our next steps into the unknown, the greatest insights that lie ahead are what we learn about each other. We might even surprise ourselves. And no matter what threats we may come upon or mysteries we face, we will not be shaken. We are stronger together. We are steadfast in our purpose. We are resolute.